Hello, hello. Welcome to the Mass Media Tribe Meetup for March 2021. My name is Aldwin Altenay, known as the Media Queen. And what are Mass Media Tribe events about, you may be wondering. Well, this is something that I started back in 2018. I actually started doing Mass Media Masters Meetup events. They were physical events that were run on the Gold Coast and in Brisbane. We were doing them every month for a, a few years up until COVID. And then when COVID hit, they became online events and we were running them fortnightly all of last year. They were fortnight events. And this year we are back to doing monthly events. And these events now are free online with the physical events. They were 10 to $15, depending if you bought online or offline. And the whole idea is to help people share their message with the masses in a very cost effective, in fact, a free way right now, in a way that no one has any excuses not to put themselves out there. We have amazing guest speakers that join us every month on different marketing topics. And tonight we have the amazing Carmen Braidwood in the Zoom room here all the way from Perth. She is a, a TV and radio host and she's been in the media for quite some time. She teaches people about confidence on camera. It's a great pleasure to have you with us, Carmen. And Carmen will be presenting a, a segment tonight. So after this intro, what we'll do is we'll hear from everyone here in the Zoom room a little bit about yourselves. And then I'm going to present a segment tonight. Now, normally I present a segment on how to get free publicity. Tonight, I'm actually going to mix it up a bit. I'm actually going to talk about how to have a successful podcast. Okay, I'm going to give you some successful podcasting tips tonight, just to give you something completely different. If you want to see my how to gain a free publicity info, you can look back at some previous Mass Media Tribe events, which are in the Mass Media Tribe group on Facebook and also on Media Queen TV on YouTube. Okay, you'll be able to see some of our previous events and you can see a segment that I do. If you really want to know how to get free publicity and you want all the insider secrets from my 30 plus years in the media as a photojournalist, then come along to my free publicity secrets event. I am doing my next one on the 23rd of March from 9 to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And that is absolutely free. You can check that out at freeprsecrets.com. And I know people have been getting a lot of great, valuable information out of that. So freeprsecrets.com, if you want to know all about how to get free publicity, I don't hold back at all. I give you everything from knowing nothing about getting publicity to getting yourself out there. So so check that out. So I will present the segment on tips to build a successful podcast today after we have our intros. And then we will hear from Carmen. Then we'll have questions after that if we have time. And then we'll have the giveaway tonight. Okay. So everyone who's in the live Zoom room will have access to win some great prizes tonight. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can still join us for the next hour and 40 minutes or so, we have the Zoom room open. All you need to do is register in Eventbrite and you will get emailed the in your confirmation, the Zoom link to attend tonight. So you can hop on at any time and come and join us in the live Zoom room. Uh, you're more than welcome, or you can stay on Facebook in your pajamas or naked running around the house, whatever you're doing and make comments there if you, if you choose to do that. Now, a little bit about me, for those who are wondering, I actually started out in the media at age 10, and I know that's a crazy age. However, I was a great table tennis player as, as a young child, and I was very angry with the world, actually. My dad always said anger is danger. And so with that, what I did is I internalized my anger for many years, and then through table tennis, I was able to actually get some anger out. And I, I trained very hard for a long time. And and at age 10, I was interviewed by the Manly Daily in Sydney, where I grew up in the Northern Beaches area. And I remember looking at the photographer up on a ladder and thinking, wow, that looks like a really exciting thing to do. I'd love to do something like that one day. As I was at the table with my, with my bat looking up at this photographer. And then at age 11, I was on Cartoon Connection on Channel 7. And I had my first media training as well. And I remember being in the Sydney studio Cartoon Connection, I remember the host looking down at me, this massive camera in front of me, and the TV host said to me, just don't think of the 2 million people watching this right now. And so clearly, all I could think about as I looked at that camera was 2 million people watching me. I froze. It was the worst interview ever. And what happened, though, is that, of course, 
media love not just to be educated they want to be entertained and what they did have in the Sydney studio at the time is they had a table tennis table behind where we were being interviewed and my brother and I we got on that table and we just kept that forehand to forehand we just kept that ball on the table and it wowed them they were absolutely blown away because most people can't even get one ball on yet alone just the way we were just getting the ball forwards you know forehand to forehand so they love that as a visual for tv and this is something to think about in your own lives is that where is it that in your life that you are doing something all the time that it just feels like second nature, whereas the media will probably look at that and say, wow, that's amazing. How do you do that, right? So I suggest moving forward, keep an ear to the ground of, of those wow moments in your life and the wow parts of your story that you share with people that make people say, wow, tell me more about that. Because often we're too close to our own story to, to realise how amazing our story is, right? And, and we're taught in Australia, of course, to rise to the middle, right? And be seen and not heard and that kind of thing, right? So it really takes something to step up in the media. It takes something to be confident on camera, right? We, we're born very confident. We're, you know, we're born loving and out there and open. And then what happens is that, you know, traumas happen, we, you know, upsets happen, and then we make it mean things like I don't belong, and I'm not good enough, and all these kind of negative things that come up for people that keep us small. So just notice the monkey chatter that may come up for you, I suggest, as you're going forward in your media journey, your marketing journey. And as you hear that little monkey chatter and those voices come up, I suggest just, just say thanks for sharing. I'm going to choose this path, you know, and stay true to yourself. So at 13, I did a radio show, Manly Warringah, and then I did a media degree in Canberra. I uh, worked in the media as a journalist in TV, radio and print for 20 odd years. Uh, so I've had a major background in the media, interviewed people like Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, Cindy Lauper, Debbie Harry from Blondie. And, you know, I can tell you that these people are just like you and I, they're, they're individuals, but what makes them stand out is a few things. Now, one is that they're really passionate about what they do. Are you doing what you're really passionate about? That if money wasn't an issue, you would be doing that thing. They're really passionate about what they do. The other thing they all have in common is they have someone else representing them to the media, which always looks good if you have someone else saying you're amazing rather than you saying you're amazing, right? The other thing that they all have in common, and someone said to me at an event once at one of my media workshops, they said they all take cocaine. Now, I don't know about their drug habits, okay? I can't speak for their drug habits, uh, but that could be the case. But regardless of that, the, the one big thing they have in common, which is important for you too, as you step up in your media journey, is to strengthen yourself to any criticism that may happen. Because guaranteed, as you step up into the limelight, as you build your confidence on camera, there's going to be people that love you and people that hate you regardless of what you do, right? You're always going to have the haters and you're always going to have the lovers. Look at Donald Trump, for example. There's a perfect example. Now, whatever you think of Donald Trump, I admire that man's resilience. I really do. I don't know how much crap that man had and he just kept on soldiering on, you know, with, with his beliefs. And I really admire that in a person, no matter what you may think of Donald Trump, right? And, you, and we notice celebrities come and go. Some celebrities fall off the bandwagon that are not able to handle the criticism and all the celebrity gossip, et cetera, right? So these are things to, to really look at in your life. And, and, you know, some things I stand for with my media business. Now, I've had AA Expose Media since 2002. And things I stand for are truth and good news in the media. You know, I've personally had depression over the years with this internalised anger that I had. I've had four friends take their own lives by the age of 45. Now, the stats are about a million people a year worldwide take their own lives and during COVID there's been more of that there's been more suicides more depression more anxiety and you would have seen it with people around you the more you listen to the mainstream news and believe everything you hear the more potentially you're going to end up depressed and potentially suicidal if you believe everything you hear so I always say do your own research with everything and I started during COVID the global good news challenge okay which which you can actually start as of so we've got a monthly challenge where you just share your name 
what you do, three things you're grateful for and a piece of good news as a Facebook Live, okay? So we've got monthly challenges, started it in June and the March one is only a simple three-day challenge which you can start today, it's the last day you can actually start it. So by midnight tonight, by the 3rd of March, you can actually start your Good News Challenge. All the details are pinned to the top of the Global Good News Challenge Facebook page, okay? So check that out, Global Good News Challenge Facebook page, absolutely free and it's amazing how great you will feel when you get into gratitude love and gratitude are the highest vibrations you will feel as a human being and the more you get into that space the more you will have a better experience of life and the more people will love you and you'll attract opportunities so i have my love heart here to remind you that you are loved and that you are love and as much as possible look for things in your life you can be grateful for because even with COVID and even with all the fiasco of the last year things we can't control there's so much we can control and there's so much we can be grateful for right now so much nature dancing singing you know I've been going back to the gym doing yoga and having saunas and getting massages all these beautiful things so you don't need a man you can be single again and again and again and go and get massages and have a great time with the massage therapist. Uh, anyway, whatever it is that you love to do, right? Just, just there's so much we can do and be grateful for. And like, if you think about it, really, if you think about now, a third of people die by the age of 65. One third of all the population die by 65. So really, when you think about our lives, like you blink and you miss it, right? It's like it's over in a flash. If you think of eternity and you think of our lives, right? So why not make the most of every single moment? And let's face it, at any moment, a nuclear bomb could hit us, right? Anything could happen and we could be wiped out tomorrow, right? Here we are all stressing about COVID and, you know, sometimes we just need to just step back for a moment and just say, hey, things could be a hell of a lot worse right now. No, thank goodness we're not going through a world war right now. Imagine what that would have been like for everyone who went through the World War One and World War Two. I just saw a movie called Radioactive uh, the other day. Has anyone seen Radioactive? It's about, uh, yeah, right, it's about... Uh, it's about um, the how basically um, nuclear weapons or how the how that was all started back in the 1940s uh, by Madame Curie. Does anyone know the Madame Curie story? It was all about Madame Curie's story about this uh, scientist in France that was Polish that that started to play around with radium and and things like that. And that eventually they started to put that in everything, and then nuclear weapons. Uh, came out of that and then also radiation uh, started like you can radio radiotherapy can be used for good and, and then you can have nuclear bombs used for bad so you know there's there's always pros and cons with everything there's always the yin yang of life with everything so that's what I stand for truth and good news in the media and that's what I want for you too and I'm very passionate about seeing more positive news stories in the media and thankfully now we do have a lot of positive news outlets out there we have the good news network we have sunny skies news we have news.com.au has a good news section now we have a happy newspaper in the UK that went viral you know there's there's lots of positive news outlets out there and people standing for more truth and good news in the media which is just awesome and fantastic to see and many journalists I know are also standing for this because they're sick of the negativity as well so that's a little bit of background now, i'd love to hear from you in the zoom room i'd love to go around the zoom room now for anyone who'd like to share just to share your name where you're from what you do and what you'd like to get out of tonight so who would like to go first just uh, pop your hand up or just unmute yourself and uh, go for your life so just share your name where you're from what you do and what you'd like to get out of tonight. Now, Mike, I can see you're unmuted. Would you like to go first? Or Louisa, I see you're unmuted. <clears throat> Who'd like to go first? I will. Good on you, Mike. Okay, over to you, Mike Palmer. <clears throat> uh, Mike Palmer, um, I'm in Hope Island, Gold Coast, Queensland. Um, <clears throat> my business is Essential Business Solutions. Um, it's a startup business for me, even though I've had 50 plus years experience as a business development consultant, this is a startup business and it uh, teaches people how to start businesses um, successfully, minimising the risk and, and uh, taking away the things that they're concerned about. Um, <clears throat> and um, what I'd like to get out of tonight is... is, is um, Overcoming the biggest problem that I have is um, facing a camera. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Good on you, Mike. Excellent. Thank you for going first. And you, of course, are just here on the Gold Coast, just up the road. So welcome, Mike. Welcome, welcome. 
Fantastic. All right. Thanks for sharing. And please do pop your links in the chat if you've just joined us. Just make sure you pop in there, you know, some links of how we can support you and what you do into the chat on the Zoom room as well. That would be wonderful. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, pop into where you're watching this right now on Facebook in the Mass Media Tribe group as well. That would be wonderful. Or if you're watching on YouTube later, this will be on Media Queen TV on, as well on YouTube. All right, Louisa, over to you. Yeah, firstly, well done, Mike, for your efforts on camera there. Hey. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so look, I'm, I'm Louisa Pateman. I'm on the Gold Coast as well. And uh, uh, last year I published my book, uh, Single Again and Again and Again, What Do You Do When Life Doesn't Go to Plan? And uh, yeah, look, it's in my memoir and it's my journey uh, through my 20s and 30s um, and uh, basically discovering and, uh, a, de a new definition to happily ever after. Uh, I ended up becoming a single mother by choice. So that's my book. And um, But, yeah, I'm happy to listen to Carmen tonight and, and get some tips. So that would be wonderful. Excellent. Thank you, Louisa. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, who wants to go next and share where they're from? Just their name. Yes, thank you, Rod. Your name, where you're from, what you do, and what you want to get out of tonight. Good day, uh, Owen. Rod Lovell's my name. Uh, in 1994, I had an aircraft accident and uh, was castigated for it. About two years ago, I published a book. I'm, I'm a first-time author, and this book has been incredibly well-received in Australia and, and places around the world. I've done a, a few TV and numerous radio interviews. I've been on Weekend Sunrise and Today Tonight, and... I'm not comfortable. I'm way out of my comfort zone like you wouldn't believe. So I'd like to get some tips on, on exactly what you're saying. You, you're looking at a, a lens one minute and the next minute you're looking at two million people and ah, it's, it's not good. So I would really like to to um, to conquer that. So uh, if I can get some hints, that'd be superb. Thank you. Wonderful, Rod. Fantastic. And Rod does have an amazing story. Do you have your book there, Rod, that you can show us the cover? And just unmute yourself there. And I just, certainly uh, do. Now we probably yeah, not just, to just see actually that. just tip it, just tip it a bit. Sometimes with the and put it in front of your face. So put it, just bring it oh. over a bit. And t yeah, there we go. Yep. And just, yep, there it is. Hold it right there. Yep, there we go. And can you just explain what it's about there, Rod? <clears throat> it's, it's very similar to Sully's story. Everybody remembers Sully in 2009, who did the miracle on the Hudson ditch an airplane. Well, in 1994, I did very similar in Botany Bay in Sydney, saved the lives of 25 people, and the authority thanked me by, um, by suspending my pilot's licence, ruining my career and personal life. So I put out a, a book about it and uh, about the, the government cover-ups. And the media, in fact, is, is very interested. As I said, I've done a few interviews, and um, I... I initially, when I put out the book, I was hoping to sell about 200 books. In just over 12 months, I've sold well over 1,000 books now. So I'm, um, in fact, a couple of days, I'm, I'm doing uh, talks in Port Lincoln across here. And I, I do about two talks for clubs and organisations per month. So it's it's been incredibly well received. So awesome. very interesting. Fantastic. And you're, so you're from South Australia, of course, for those that missed that? A crow eater. A crow eater. <laughs> None of you young tads would know what a crow eater was. So. You don't eat crows, do you, Rod? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you <do. You're> Breakfast, <laughs> lunch, dinner, and tea. <laughs> Seriously, are they tasty? Oh, beautiful, oh. beautiful. Okay, well, just don't tell my pet crows here about it. They'll get very upset. They could be related. Who knows? I actually have some that I feed here in the morning. It's a true story. And I, and I have met Tippi Hedren in LA, who's the lady that was in the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds, and she got attacked. I thought there were crows in that movie, the Alfred, in The Birds movie, that she got attacked by, it was actually ravens. They call them ravens. They're bigger than crows over in America. She got attacked by the, the ravens over there. So she, uh, Tippi Hedren's the mother of Melanie Griffiths and she runs Shambhala Reserve over there and she has a big cat sanctuary in LA. So before COVID, I had the great fortune to go and see her and interview her over in LA. Amazing lady, talking of crows and ravens. Amazing. And if you look up animal spirit meanings around certain, you know, when animals cross your path, someone said to me, it means something. When you see an animal, you notice an animal cross your path, then not then notice it and look up the animal spirit meaning online. And it's fascinating. I've started to do this when I've noticed animals come into my life. 
uh, fascinating. So I, I tend not to eat the crows myself. I must say I haven't ever eaten a crow. Uh, but, um, but, you know, I guess maybe there's food shortage down there in uh, South Australia, is there? <laughs> and if you believe that, Aldrin, I've got a Sydney Harbour Bridge to sell you too. So <laughs> I can do a package deal. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, Rod. All right, let's 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 move on. Let's move on. All right. Thank you very much, Rod, for sharing. Okay, now who else would like to share? If you just uh, unmute yourself, and um, we are going to hear from Carmen later. But Carmen, if you'd like to, you know, share, you're welcome now. And and just oh, why not? I can do that if you like. Hi, everyone. Hey. I'm Carmen. I'm looking forward to presenting for all of you. I'm going to share five hacks that I think will help you with your confidence on camera in your business specifically. Um, I've also got a really exciting giveaway. I'm going to give away an hour's free coaching with myself to work through your um, on-camera fears and help you with your video strategy. And if you hang around, I'll also reward you with details of how all of you can train with me for free really soon. So um, I'm really looking forward to helping bust some of those fears that have already been mentioned. I think tonight I'll be able to give you some insights that will indeed help you. And in the presentation, I'll tell you a bit more about my background in the media too. Beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you, Carmen. Yay, Carmen, all the way from Perth, WA. Fantastic. Okay, who else have we got in the Zoom room here? Anyone else like to show their faces or at least uh, we can hear you if you are running around naked there? Uh, so anyone else like to show their face or introduce themselves? We're just doing quick intros, just who you are, where you're from, what you do and what you would like to get out of tonight. So who else would like to share? We've got Louis, Nicole, Christina, Rebecca, any of you like to share? What are you doing in the background? I wonder, it's always interesting when people have their cameras off. <laughs> are, they, are they in the bathroom? And I, I must admit, I have been on some Zoom events where I've been in the bathroom and I, and I think, gee, I hope I don't accidentally press the, the camera button and, and show them all that I'm in the bathroom sitting on the toilet right now. But any, anyway, thankfully it hasn't happened so far and hopefully it won't happen. Hopefully you won't get the great pleasure of seeing that. <laughs> anyway, so would anyone else like to share before we move on? Last chance. Just unmute yourself if you would like to share. If not, you can just pop into the chat. Of course, you don't have to share here tonight, although it is about putting yourself out there. So if you are game, then you're more than welcome. If not, it's all perfectly fine too. But please do pop into the chat at the very least. Pop in there what you do, where you're from, and any links that you would like to share. So if you have a website or an event coming up or books or anything you want to promote, just pop it in the chat. Unlike other groups too, if you are in the Mass Media Tribe group or in the Loving Life group, we welcome people to share their links on there. Obviously, we don't want you spamming people and being a complete nuisance. But, you know, most people who join our communities, they do have great things to share. And obviously, we want you to share so that we can help support you, all right? So please do pop your links into the chats. And, uh, and any, you know, if you've got a YouTube channel or anything like that, please pop it in. All right, fantastic. Now I am going to talk about tips for building a successful podcast. Now, did you know that there are over a million podcasts in America alone? Are you aware of that? Over a million podcasts now in America alone. It's insane how popular this is becoming. Now we have podcasts, of course, which are audio or a lot of people now starting online TV shows, okay? Now I do recommend if you are looking to start a podcast that you do it as a video because you can always turn a video into audio. You can always extract the audio from a video presentation and you can also get the info transcribed. Whereas if you do an audio, you're never going to be able to turn that into a video really unless you have just photos, right? And they say if a photo is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million words. So video is incredibly powerful nowadays. And we know the way things are going with the online media world is that more and more people are watching TV on their devices now on their phones, on their laptops, on their iPads, etc. So if you're not doing your own podcast, I highly recommend that you start to look at this as a 
marketing method for yourself okay either a, a podcast as an audio or a video but i personally do like the video if you are going to do a video podcast you need good internet okay it's one of the crucial things if you're doing a video stream as we are now you want to have ideally the best internet you can get so we have nbn here in australia which is a lot better than the previous internet that we had uh, however things do drop out still from time to time right so ideally you want to make sure if you're going to do a podcast that you have a good mic okay and that you have good lighting okay nowadays of course with the zoom rooms we can have a great i actually have a green screen here behind me okay and i've got my branding in the green screen okay so there's things like this you can do which are pretty funky and that do look very professional when you're presenting online and also if you want to get speaking gigs online too it's important that you look good on camera okay and that you come across obviously confidently as well in saying that in looking good on camera of course it's important not to be concerned about that at the same time so you know when you're presenting if you're too worried about looking good then you're going to get very nervous and you're not going to be able to be confident on cameras i'm sure Carmen will share more about that right so as much as we want to look good it's important not to be infatuated with looking good <laughs> all right okay so so there's a few things there to be aware of. Now, I just want to let you know the nine best business podcasts of 2021. Okay, the nine best business podcasts currently of 2021. There's one called The Indicator, which is the best quick take. It's called the best quick take business podcast of 2021. And then we have the best for women is the Biz Chicks. Okay, this is just to give you some ideas of the kind of podcasts out there. Biz, the Biz Chicks, C-H-I-X. That's the best podcast for women that's voted out there at the moment. And this is from the Balanced Small Business, okay, from a survey there. The best for minority businessmen and women is Brown Ambition. That's the best for minority businessmen and women. The best for mindset currently for 2021, the best business podcast for mindset is the Mind Your Business podcast. You might want to check these out to get an idea of what some other people are doing. The best interview show, Entrepreneurs on Fire. And that is a great show, Entrepreneurs on Fire, best interview show. Best inside look, how I built this. The best for inspiration currently is Rise and Grind. The best from the Ivy League is the HBR Idea Cast. HBR Idea Cast. And the best practical tips podcast for 2021 currently in business is the $100 MBA. The $100 MBA podcast. Okay, so there's some ideas on the types of different podcasts out there. I suggest if you're looking to do a podcast for business, that you do something that is going to enhance your brand. So you really need to think about who is your ideal client that you want to attract, and then look at how you can give them the most valuable information that you can. All right, so here's a few tips I would like to share now. Now, with your podcast, as I said, you can extract the audio. Now, with something on Zoom, if you're doing an interview on Zoom, you can actually get the audio out of the Zoom interview, right? So you can actually, and also things like StreamYard. Now, I use StreamYard to do a lot of my interviews. And StreamYard also, what happens with the paid versions of StreamYard is you can download the video and you can download the audio once you do an interview. So you really want to make sure you have good audio quality, ideally an external mic. Okay, now Rode mics are great. I've got a little Samsung, Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N, one that a little portable one currently that I just clip onto my laptop, which I bought a little one just for travel because I thought I'd be doing a lot of travel in the last year. And of course, that hasn't happened hell of a lot. So I've, I've bought everything. I've bought a light laptop. I've bought a little, a little mic so that I could use those for traveling. So depending on what your needs are, a lot of people have those huge, chunky mics and you know i mean road is is really the best brand r-o-d-e uh, for webcams you want to, have to make sure you have a good camera as well the logitech webcams are quite good okay and then the next thing to think about with a podcast is you want to ideally generate some high quality reviews of your podcast okay a lot of things now nowadays are done by reputation marketing so reviews are really important with everything you're doing so ideally you want to think about how can you encourage people to leave reviews now i was on an event the other day and what they said is if you leave a review we'll give you a special gift if you leave a review for our 
for our podcast, for our event, etc. So that's one thing you can do. You can offer people a gift if they leave a review. Okay, I wouldn't say that's uh, cash for comment, <laughs> but maybe it's a really bad review. You might want to delete it. <laughs> well, some things you can't delete, but you know, I do. If people like what they they see, then you know, be generous with your reviews. And and if you have some some feedback for people, then you know, give them feedback ideally offline. If um, you know, I always say be kind to others, right? Be kind, be kind. And, you know, nothing's ever perfect, right? So the fact that people are having a go and putting themselves out there, I think that's awesome. And as long as you're integral with what you do and you treat others as you want to be treated, then I think that's the main thing, right? Now, also look at how brand partners can assist in building your audience as well. So you might want to look at, you know, JVs, as they say, joint ventures. You might want to look at people in your field who are influencers and then look at how you can collaborate with those influencers. So that way you're sort of piggybacking off their contacts, right? And so ideally, though, with those people, if you're going to someone with a massive following and you're pitching your idea to them, then ideally you want to also build up your own following as much as you can so that you also have something to offer them in return, right? Always look for win-win scenarios when you're looking for people to interview. Now, search engine optimization is really important, particularly if you're going to show transcripts from your interviews, okay? Look at how you can search engine optimize, look for keywords, uh, Google Analytics, look for keywords, uh, Google keywords that are going to help push you up on the search engine optimization, okay, for your podcasts. Now, also, I would suggest when you are interviewing people, it's really important to listen carefully to your guests. Okay, now this might seem like a very logical thing, but there's a reason we have two ears and one mouth. Okay, <laughs> there's a reason because it's important when you're interviewing people to listen, to really be present with them and listen. And that's a big part of being confident, I, I believe, in your interviews and being confident on camera is really being present with the person that's interviewing and not thinking about the 2 million people watching or however many it is, right? You be as present as you can. And, and if you're challenged with this, as I know I've been challenged with this in the past, a great practice to get into, I would suggest, is meditation. And meditation is something that, that challenged me for years. And often I would fall asleep when I meditate. Who meditates here, actually? I'd love to see who, just show of hands, who meditates? Okay, quite a few people. Do you know that nearly every successful person I know meditates? It's, it's amazing how powerful it is, you know, even just taking a moment of stillness and, and deep, deep breaths, you know, breathing, breathing from the diaphragm. You know, when you breathe in, your stomach goes out, you know, breathe, taking those deep breaths. And I know being in the media for years, you know, they don't like dead air on radio, right? Dead air is a big no-no. However, it's important to breathe as well. So it's very different with public speaking where they, you know, there's power of the pause in public speaking. But on radio, you need to keep things flowing, right? Definitely keep things flowing. So there's another little tip for you as well. So bring that passion to your interviews and to your podcasts if you are going to do it. Now, with podcasts, also be consistent with your podcasts, okay? So do podcasts regularly. You might have a regular time that you do your podcast. Some people do it at a certain time every week. I've been mixing mine up. I've got about 600 videos and interviews now on Media Queen TV. I've had over 20,000 views in the last few years right across the board of all my interviews. Now, some of them don't have that many views. However, the thing is, because I love what I do, I don't care about the number of views. I just keep putting it out there. I think if one person hears this, one person sees this, and I'm impacting one person's life out there with what I'm putting out, then it's worth putting out. So don't stress about the number of followers and the number of viewers, and because that will come. Because I often say life is like the exponential curve, right? It's like, you know, sometimes in life and in business, we feel like we're chugging along, chugging along, chugging along, chugging along, and then there'll be a tipping point, right? You might have one amazing interview with a massive superstar. Suddenly, things will just go through the roof, right? So, think, so anything could tip at any point. So the thing is just stay on your path, stay true to yourself and true to your journey and true to what you want to put out there, and success will eventually come as long as you stay consistent with it. Don't just do like a few podcasts and think, oh, this isn't working, I'm only getting a few views and then give up. No, <laughs> persistence is key when it comes to podcasts and with your online TV shows. Now, also, I suggest promote your show as much as possible, okay? So when you do your show, do things like Facebook Lives are really effective. You can do Instagram Lives. You can apply now to do LinkedIn Lives. It takes a while to be accepted to do a LinkedIn Live, but now this is a new feature that's come in with LinkedIn. Okay, so when you do your podcast, promote it. So you can send email blasts out, promote it to your social media network, 
let people know that you've done a show. And then also I suggest when you're interviewing people that you also ask them to promote the show out to their contacts as well, because it makes them look great too. So a great thing to do is to email out to your database and let them know before the interview, say we're, we're going to go live on this date with this interview or this particular show, come and join us live. Or if you are going to do it live, some people do pre-record, uh, but if you are going to do live as I like to do things live, then ask people to come and join you on the show and then afterwards email out the replay link as well so that people know about it because people do need to hear things multiple times right the attention span of human beings now I think is less than a, is less than a flea I believe about three seconds something ridiculous anyway so you know you need to be you need to get out in front of people like 20 times before they want to do business with you also with your podcast before you start think about your niche find your niche what is it that you want to be known for your, your specialty and focus on that now when I started doing shows online I just started to create different shows around things that I was passionate about so I started a show called Truth Expose TV and I interviewed David Icke now David Icke got banned from coming into Australia recently because of his controversial views or well, before COVID actually um, however I, I wanted to interview this man I started a show called Truth Expose TV because I was sick of the lies that we were be being fed by mainstream media I started to do research and noticing all sorts of information that was never shown in mainstream media and so I started a show about truth then I loved doing seeing movies so I started a movie review TV show then I loved animals so I did animal action TV right in line with my animal charity work I wanted something around marketing. So I did the Media Mastery Show, right? Interviewing people in the marketing field. Uh, so I just started all these different shows. And nowadays they're all underneath the one brand, which is the Media Queen TV brand, right? So they all you'll find all these different shows. I started one on business, Business Expose TV. There's that one in there as well. Uh, nowadays, though, as things have changed, different live streaming platforms have changed. I just want to keep it all very simple and build the Media Queen brand. And so now it's Media Queen TV. Right, everything's in there so whatever it is you're you're passionate about and you're interested in, you could start something on something in line with your passion as well it doesn't have to be specifically related to business however if you do use it for business it's incredibly powerful if you want to build your leads and your sales podcasting is huge also focus on your listeners have a have a listen to what your listeners are wanting to now I got invited to co-host on tech webcast which is a podcast has now had over a million downloads uh, online and I co-hosted that for about three years with two guys from Victoria and one guy from America who I never met and the reason I got invited to be a co-host with these guys is because I had some of my clients on the show and they loved how I came across and they said hey would you like to co-host and so I, did, I thought well I'm no expert in technology tech webcast about technology but I know enough to be able to get on there and, and share whatever I share and that's the thing you only need to know 10% more than someone else to be able to teach it okay so you don't have to know everything so don't let that imposter syndrome get in your head and say oh, how, who am I to share this or right and interviewing people then you're using their expertise anyway so it's just about holding a conversation it's just like having a conversation over a drink or a coffee right anyone can do that surely right so it's just getting out of our head and into our heart, in fact, getting out of our head and into our heart. So there's some podcast tips. Now, does anyone else here want to share any of their podcast tips before we go on to hear from Carmen today? Any podcast tips, anything that anyone else would like to share? Has anyone got a podcast that they would like to share with us? Uh, your podcast or your show? Anyone like to share? Just uh, unmute yourself or put your hand up or put a Yes, Carmen. I can if you like. I have a podcast. Oh. I made it specifically for Perth, uh, based it on the people that I know from the community that I have host on Facebook called Perthling. And it's a little like Humans of New York. It's called People of Perth. And we tell multiple stories in each episode of the people that we have in our membership group. And so it's been stitched together to form a really beautiful product for this part of the world. But it's also kind of universally appealing because at the end of the day, we all like to hear other people's stories. And so a good tip that I had for the launch date, and I must admit, because I'm working on confidence on camera so hard, I haven't kept up the promotion of people of Perth, but um, the launch date was really effective because we launched with four episodes and we hosted a party at the same time for members of the Perthling community and just encouraged them to, we actually had the party out of town. So it was this about 20 minute drive out of Perth. And so I sort of banked on the fact that most people would have time to listen to the podcast on their way home and then hopefully get home and review it as well. So yeah, it was a, a good way to make a little bit of a splash with our podcast launch. 
Awesome. I love that, Carmen. And that's the thing, you know, audio podcasts are very popular because a lot of people do listen on the run. And, you know, and then there's a whole question of how long should a podcast be? And, you know, some people say, you know, 15 minutes, some people say half an hour. I personally love to do one hour interviews and I I love to do them on camera. And one of the main reasons is because you can go deep with a one hour interview. And if people aren't interested, they can just switch off at any time. But if people love the topic, they love the one hour interviews because you really get to know someone's story and you really be able to share some great content. I find often 15 minutes, half an hour is a bit too short to really get into the, the crux of things. I find with an hour, it can really go deep. And I find every single interview that is done, every podcast that done, you are leaving a legacy. Now, as I mentioned, I've had four friends take their own lives, right? There was no video content of these four people anywhere. We had a few photos to remember them by, no video. So I think video is incredibly powerful. And the sooner... You get yourself out there on camera, whether you're doing Facebook Lives, if you join the Global Good News Challenge, you know, most people do that in about three minutes, right? That could be one way to build your confidence, right? So whatever it is, just start getting yourself out on camera. However you do it, just start putting yourself out there. Do not let perfection get in the way of progress and just start something. And you will be leaving a legacy every single time you put yourself out there. And you'll be impacting those around you and you'll feel amazing also putting yourself out there. And you are going to get your haters. You can always block people. You know, there's there's no need for rudeness online. And, you know, it's unfortunate that some people are hurting and that hurt people hurt people, as I always say, right? So it's important to remember that if someone's being nasty, it means nothing about you and it means everything about them. So just send them love, send them love, compassion, kindness from a distance and hope that they sort themselves out, right? It's not about you. You don't have to hang out with these people. I know sometimes these people are family. That's a little bit more difficult around Christmas time. However, just minimize your contact with negative people, I suggest, right? Hang out with like-minded, positive people as much as possible, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Carmen. Anyone else like to share? Anyone got a podcast out there that we can support? Or put your links in the chat if you do have a podcast or a, a YouTube channel or something that we can check check out what you do and support each other, subscribe, etc. Anyone else have any they'd like to share? I'll have a look at the chat here. There's a few things coming in. Christina, great to see you. Christina Savka's awesome. I am going to be interviewing Christina on Friday, actually. We're doing a great uh, interview. So uh, check that out. I schedule my interviews on Screen Out a week out and we stream it to Facebook and YouTube. So that's how I do my interviews nowadays. And we are talking about be seen, heard and amplify your brand. That's at one o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time on Friday, the 5th of March. So come along to that. And uh, and any of your live comments to StreamYard, I can actually pop up on the screen as well. So I have the paid version of StreamYard. You can do a, a free version, but with the free version, they use the StreamYard logo and you can only go to one platform. With the paid version, I think I pay about 240 a year or something US. And with that, you can go to three platforms. You can have up to 10 people in the Zoom room. You get more hours of record time, et cetera. And then they've got the, about $500 a year or so. You can go to, I think it's eight platforms or something like that. So you can go out to a lot more, which I didn't feel I needed. Um, if you do want to upgrade on it, though, I can give you a special code that gives you $10 US off the upgrade if you would like to upgrade. Otherwise, just test it out. Just use the free version for a while. Just, you know, sink your teeth in, get rolling with it. I think it is a great platform, very simple to use. There's things like OBS Studio out there and Ecamm Live and, you know, there's all these different sort of programs out there. A lot of them, I, I looked into this for quite a few months before I decided on a live stream platform. And to save you the heartache and all the stress of doing that, a lot of them were very very complicated and very hard to get your head around if you're not techie you will get lost in all of that right with obs etc so i suggest just keep it simple keep it simple and you know that way you will actually won't stop yourself with technology from putting yourself out there okay anyone else want to share before we come over to the amazing carmen anyone else want to share any podcast or any podcast ideas maybe you've got some ideas of one that you want to start maybe this is a a great place to share and maybe run some ideas by us if you're thinking of doing a podcast. Anyone like to share on that? Here's your chance. Just unmute yourself and share if you would like to. We've got quite a few comments coming in on Facebook too. Hello to all our Facebook people. Hello, hello. We've got some comments from Henry. We've got Foxy saying she's loving it. Dennis there. Dennis says, I grew up in SA. I know what you're talking about, Rod, about the crows. I think that was. Uh, Dennis watching from the Gold Coast. Okay, fantastic. So quite a few people on Facebook there. Thank you so much for your comments. Beautiful. All right. 
Okay, so anyone else want to share before we go over to Carmen? No, we'll go over to Carmen. All right, everyone wants to hear from you, Carmen. So now Carmen works at News Talk 6PR882 currently, and she has worked at 96FM Perth and Macquarie Southern Cross Media in the past. She studied at the Australian Film, Television and Radio School, which she attended from 2004 to 2005. While you were there, I was at um, Canberra University doing a media degree from 02 to 04, so about the same time, about the same uh, same vintage uh, carbon. Uh, she is in Perth. She is married, so she's definitely not single again and again and again. She's <laughs> married and she is awesome and she also works on TV. She's an MC. She has the hashtag Perthling movement. She is an on-camera coach and sharing us with us tonight about confidence on camera in business. Please welcome Carmen, over to you. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Alden. Yeah, thank you. And lots of really good insights there as well, which um, I think I'll be able to really back up throughout much of this presentation. So, you know, there's a lot of, lot of concepts that we use on camera when we're presenting on camera, when we're interviewing people on camera that apply to the audio medium, that also apply to the, the public speaking medium. It's just understanding which things are the same and which things are a little bit different. Um, and yeah, I'll also share a bit more of my story. It's good to hear from a few of you all over the country. I once lived on the Gold Coast. So those of you over there on the GC, I, I do relate to your beautiful lifestyle. It's been 10 years now since I left. The Gold Coast and CFM and stop reading news there, but I absolutely adored my time on the Gold Coast. And Rod, yes, even I know what a crow eater is. So um, I think us as what are we? What were we called? We're called sand gropers. Us sand gropers are well used to yelling out crow eater at opposing AFL teams and things like that. Yeah, so we can definitely relate on that front. So it's really nice to see all of you. It's really nice to meet all of you. Oh, and if I may, Aldrin, I'd love it if you could allow me to share the screen because I have a presentation, which I'm- um, Oh, sure, like. absolutely, yes. Let's do that. I'll allow you. you to share the screen. Okay, one moment, we'll do that. Do that in the quietly in the background while I yes while I yes I here we go all right I've just changed that over now so you should be able to share that now oh there it is yep perfect here Yay. We go. So, yeah, look, I'll take you through what to expect out of tonight's presentation. As I mentioned earlier, I would love to invite one of you, um, whoever is the lucky winner, to a free one-hour coaching session with me. These normally sell in packages for multiple thousands of dollars or, you know, individually for $600. So it's a lot of value on the line. So it's worth hanging around if you are interested in starting your on-camera confidence journey. I also have a really great way that absolutely everybody watching tonight can train with me for free over three days in the next couple of weeks. So I'll share all the details about that right at the end and how you can get involved as well, which I'm really looking forward to telling you all about. Now, I'm going to do my first favourite on-camera trick. I'm going to minimise all of you so that I can't see you. I'm going to minimise me so that I can't see myself. And this is for a really specific reason. It's so distracting. And we are vain, aren't we, human beings? And when we get the opportunity, if we see ourselves, we will look at ourselves. And I really want to focus on looking deep into the lens of the camera the whole time I'm speaking to you here in the Zoom room so that you and I kind of interact and engage more normally. You know, this is about recreating natural human engagement and connection. And it's a little bit different to what I've done as a television presenter, because sometimes as a TV presenter, we can be working in formats that require formality. And I think that's some of the reason why people develop hangups about their confidence on camera, the way they look, the way they feel about putting themselves out there. I have all those same hangups and I'll share with you some of my story and how I managed to get over that um, as we kind of progress through this. So this is what I'm going to take you through today. I've got five confidence on camera hacks. They're going to help you grow your business by teaching you to unlock your expertise. Okay, so um, and you, they can help you by unlocking your expertise to become viewed as the authority in your space. And this is even if you've already previously struggled 
to gain exposure on traditional media like TV or radio, or if you have had traditional media like TV or radio and you have struggled, as we heard Rod mentioned, the nerves factor, thinking about those 2 million people who might be watching or even the 20 million people who could potentially be watching when you start to share things out on the internet, um, this is a way for you to still tap into that expertise and do things better. And I was going to add, because I've, I have minimised all of you, feel free, Aldwin, to butt in if anybody asks a question. I'm more than happy to take a question or a comment as we go along. And the next thing we're going to cover off is the tricks that TV presenters like me use to make our on-camera performances more engaging so you don't waste time making video content or hosting lives or making podcasts on video that nobody watches. And there's a few tips that we use in the media that will really help you with that. And then I'm going to share with you a few ideas to help you share more of your personality, more of who you really are with your online following right now. I want to give you some things you can actually action this week, today, tomorrow. Um, so you can start building trust online. And then this wonderful thing happens when people on the internet trust you because you're no longer a faceless brand. They can't start calling you for work opportunities and they're not calling you to find out how much it is. Or they're not calling you to find out how the program works. They're actually calling you because they already know they want to work with you. You just need to tell them where to, where to send their money. You know, people really will start to throw money at you once they trust who you are online. And, and you can achieve that by doing that with excellent on-camera performances. So I'm really looking forward to talking through you. Uh, those things for you today. So a little bit about me, as Aldwin mentioned, I'm a television and radio presenter. I have been for 20 years. Yeah, I did my um, I did my radio training back when I was still at university over here at the University of WA. I um, got a little bored with my university degree in arts because it wasn't very practically focused. And I um, really desired to work in a career that allowed me to master the art of a live performance as I had done as an amateur dramatist. <laughs> So I was right into theatre and singing and terrible at dancing. So I couldn't be a triple threat. So when I heard about radio, it really appealed to that desire in me to, to put myself out there and master a live performance. The TV started to come in over the years while I was working in radio. So by sort of 2000, I was trained up in radio 2001. I was out working as a freelancer, getting my first gigs in Perth as a producer. And then I moved off to regional uh, WA and then eventually regional Victoria and Queensland. So you can see some of the pictures looking back. These are more recent pictures of, of my career back here in Perth. I'm back here for the second time over. This time I'm probably back to stay. My mum would be thrilled about that. And that's because I met my husband within six weeks of moving back here. So things are pretty good on that front. Now, the thing I want to talk to you about though with the TV, you know, these days I work on a, a locally produced travel show which is all about WA called Destination WA which you can watch on the Nine Network anywhere you live in Australia um, but when I started on that show and that was sort of seven years ago and even back here when I was reading the TV news on CFM over there on the Gold Coast when we ran a bit of an experiment of putting radio onto the TV you know anytime I did TV it brought up a whole lot of muck in me that is associated with the way I look and the way I perceive the way I look, my fears around putting myself out there, my fears around not being liked. You know, Aldwin mentioned when, you know, you do put yourself out there, you invariably get some of that negative feedback. You know, that really just brought up all this gunk I had going on about being bullied in school. And I think a lot of those experiences are very universal. You know, this is why we develop these kinds of nervous fears around being on camera because we have these moments in our lives that have asked a lot of us and maybe put a lot of pressure on us and they really do you know conjure themselves back up anytime you put yourself out of your comfort zone particularly in a very public setting so I'm really looking forward to sharing with you the strategies that I had to develop to help myself just get over that you know once I realized that my my obsession with the way I looked was actually holding me back. I was able to do a lot more great things with my career than I had done previously. And I, I do think in many ways it had taken a much 
quicker progression if I'd actually just let that go, you know, put some of those fears in the bin sooner. But to save you 20 years, I'm going to share a few of those strategies. And I continue to share those strategies in my confidence on camera programs. I now work as a virtual trainer. And this is because uh, in 2017, that show back there on that previous slide, uh, Carmen and Fitzy was axed by the ARN network over here on 96FM, happens in radio all the time. I was brought in from the Gold Coast to replace, you know, one of the veteran broad broadcasters on 96 of M. Gary Shannon is a local legend so imagine me being part of the show that had to come in and replace him you know so we got seven good years Fitzy and I he had 20 amazing years on the radio station but it didn't stop them saying you know goodbye we're going to do something different next year so when that happened obviously I started freelancing in the media and I have been ever since I work at 6PR as Alden mentioned and I continue to work on that show Destination WA but really the main part of what I do now is this new modern take on media training I can I can still help you if you want to be grilled on air and learn how to handle tough interviews and handle a crisis but the stuff I really get great personal satisfaction from is helping people solopreneurs, uh, business owners, creators, people from heart-led industries in particular, you know, build trust online by putting themselves out there and in turn attracting dream clients. And I do that with in-person workshops, but also virtually as we're experiencing right now. So if you want to be involved with anything I do, it really doesn't matter where you live. We can come up with a virtual training solution that is going to suit you either one-on-one -on -one or in groups or as part of some of these free things that I'm going to tell you about at the end of this particular presentation. So you might have noticed that whenever things get really bad, we've had a terrific example in the last uh, you know, year, haven't we? The authorities use on-camera presence to communicate with us. And they do this because, as Aldwin pointed out, you can say so much more through video than you can uh, simply with audio or simply with the printed word. But what is also going on is that you can risk missing the mark with the written word too. Anyone, I mean, we've got a couple of amazing authors in the room. Anyone who's written anything would know how much extra effort you have to go to to ensure that you're not misconstrued. But you can say less almost on camera and you can achieve so much more on camera as well. And so that's why the authorities choose to use video messaging, you know, and they're using all the platforms now, not just television, to deliver important messages on camera, to make sure they're not misconstrued, to make sure that people of all abilities can hear and engage with their message. And they're doing it to, to also convey connection and support, you know, particularly our politicians who want to be re-elected as a result of their handling of something as catastrophic as a pandemic. You know, they will, they will really amplify their on-camera time because they know that they want to get the win for the being the person who managed us through that situation. So, so there's a they are the very specific reasons why why people use those on camera you know presentations, and you can use them for your business too. They're just so effective, and I often say they replace the need to go to networking events for many people. You know, you can you can do the work of a year's worth of networking simply by putting a few videos out there consistently throughout the year and reach a much wider audience. The other reason is this, people buy from people. So if you feel like you've been successfully hiding behind your brand for years and years and years and not putting yourself out there and getting media through the great work of a PR queen like Aldwin, or if you've uh, been avoiding it when people ask you to appear on their podcast or appear on their, their vlogcast or do the, the Zoom webinar, then yeah, you're missing a really valuable opportunity to show the internet that you're a real person you know people they they just love to do business with other people and we've even seen this happen in major corporations you know the big banks of the in the 80s and the 90s when we dealt with big corporates we don't want to do that anymore because there was so little accountability wasn't there when things went wrong you had no one to call but now even the banks are instilling business managers who are your person to guide you through that experience of working with them and it's a it's a very tried and true marketing strategy to create a human face 
to any brand. So the more you can put your own face out there and let people build trust in you is, um, is really, really important. Now, a large part of why I decided to start teaching people confidence on camera so that they could generate that trust online is actually this guy. Now, he helped me teach him to present to camera. And this back then, this was 10 years ago when I just moved back to Perth. And I didn't really know why he, a chiropractor, as you might be able to see from the picture, would want to even learn to present to camera. And I asked him, he said, well, you know, what are you talking about? And he said, well, I want to be able to stay in my patients' lives, even if they're not in the treatment room. And I think looking back in this, I think that was pretty visionary because he said, I want to be able to record a stretch that I would like them to do so they don't have to experience pain any longer than they need to. And they can come back and see me when they're ready. I said, but won't that stop people needing to come and see you? He said, no, that's just going to demonstrate to them that I care about them and that I can help them. And very much more importantly, almost on top of that, from a marketing perspective, it's going to demonstrate my expertise. And once he and I settled on that expertise as being the thing that we needed to showcase, we realised that a really important education movement was also, you know, within his hands. There's, there's a lot of negative press that comes out about chiropractic. And yet, if the public just knew exactly what it was, and he could sort of talk about it, not sort of talk about it, he did talk about it directly on camera and share what he's been able to do with, or what you can do with chiropractic because they can't share testimonials in their industry being allied health. But he certainly could talk about how he can help you if you're suffering certain ailments. And we realised that with just a few videos, he could put out such an incredible video content strategy 10 years on. And I just gave him a few simple lessons on how to, how to actually engage with the lens, how to look into that lens as if it's one person you're talking to, not the potential 2 million you could be talking about. To sort of go back to that comment we heard from Alden and again from Rod, it, it, it's so imperative that you just think about one person. And this guy to this day tells me that was the best tip. So I've already given it to you. You don't even need to come and do my training. There's a single best tip that you can take with you to any on-camera interview. Just focus on the person you're talking to. But if you're the one doing the presenting, just present to one person. Visualize that person. Name that person. Create an avatar for them the same way you would if you've done a marketing exercise like creating an avatar for your perfect client. You know, name her or him. Look at them. Talk to them each time you make any kind of presentation. This is what I did with this chiropractor. And to this day, he tells me that he continues to get people coming to visit him because of seeing one of his videos online. And he gets that once a day. And I know this because he's actually my husband. So back then, I didn't even know I had a business idea. You know, but sure enough, during those years of sort of knowing the inevitability of the broadcast media and my show would probably come to an end one day, I really did know that teaching media skills to people like Ryan, who are their own business and need to put their face out there in order to make their business work was something I wanted to do. And he's, you know, being that first guinea pig, he's that first testimonial. It really does work. It's been a very successful business and it means that I've had three years to kind of not go back to full-time work and work out a new business, which isn't an easy thing to do. So I can thank him in many ways for that. He's also taught me a lot about business over the years too. So let's get into these specific hacks for things you can do to grow your business right now using some confidence on camera lose your connection to perfection. This is a thing that's come up already tonight, you know, choosing, choosing to progress instead of waiting until you're ready and you've got all your ducks in a row. You know, the best videos that I have posted that still contain tips and value and things that I can help you with to be more confident on camera. And you can watch any of these online. Um, just look for me at On Camera with Carmen anywhere. Um, you know, these tips, videos that I shared, the best performing ones are the ones where my stepson and his friends walk in the door or the dog barks in the background or maybe my background isn't as pristine and I've done it outside with my AirPods in and I'm walking the dog. You know, some of these natural moments of life are actually the best things that I've been able to capture on camera. And if I hadn't have started 
or never been able to convey that. And what I think, you know, the message is there, and I hope it empowers you too, that your message is so much more important than all that other stuff in the background. Sure, it helps. You can add to your professionalism by learning a few of these tricks that TV presenters and TV producers use. But if you just mastered the performance first and foremost, and speak into the lens as if you're talking to a person that you like, and just use your mobile, which these days probably records really, really well. Um, most of our, our mobile phones record in HD. Uh, you can even set them to record a little better if you um, have a, a tech savvy person in your family, get them to help you set it up to have a better recorder set, recording setting. The microphones aren't bad. As I mentioned before, you could even just use, you know, your AirPods or any kind of uh, listening device because they've all got microphones in them there too. So you could get started without even having to invest in a microphone because your AirPods, which some ladies can just cover up with their hair, but it's pretty accepted that they're there. You know, as long as you're focusing on delivering a really good message, I, I don't think you need to let your lack of technology or gear that you've invested in actually hold you back. You know, it's really worth just realizing that knowing your mobile phone, and if you look into the camera, not your reflection, as I mentioned, you know, minimize your reflection or with your phone, so much easier, just turn it around, talking to the camera instead. And the sooner you get more comfortable talking to things that don't give you any visual feedback, where you can sort of just insert the aha uh -huh and the, <laughs> the laughs and the reactions, the relatable moments. Sooner you get used to delivering your content in that really natural way to something that gives you nothing back um, is, is better too because your performance is going to get a lot better. Now, you want the light on your face in your room, of course. So if you've got natural light, that's amazing. Again, natural light is enough. Just shoot in the daytime until you've got something better. Then go down the line of investing maybe in a ring light. Um, I have fact sheets and things that I'm starting to put out there. I can share all the actual tech that I use, but I would love to impress on you today that you really don't need anything more than your mobile phone and maybe something to make the sound that little bit better. But again, the mics are actually pretty, get, pretty good on your mobile phone to get started. Then you might want to look at things like stabilizing, you know, using a tripod so you don't have that wobble in the camera. There are um, great stabilizing devices like mobile gimbals and things like that, that you can go down the line of. But if it's going to stop you from actually recording, thinking you have to go and buy stuff, then I wholeheartedly suggest just do it on your mobile. The other thing you can do on your mobile is add captions. So we know that 80% of users watch their video online with no sound. Um, I'm what in that 80%. I do it lying in bed next to my sleeping husband. So if you're in that boat, captions are like this wonderful um, courtesy you can do to your audience to guarantee that they're going to watch your video. So it, captions can be really easy to achieve. They're hard to do yourself because you've got to match them up to the, to the video. But one way to do it um, yourself that I found really, really effective is the app called Clipscribe. I think I've got a picture of this. Oh, I was going to show you that video first. Um, there's an app called Clipscribe. I'll show you the picture in a second. First, to illustrate um, using captions and also the effectiveness of a video that includes a little bit of distraction, uh, have a look at one of these expert videos I shared recently. In the Confidence on Camera program, I spend a lot of time talking about how important it is for a TV presenter to be focused on the task at hand. So you don't make lots of costly mistakes and you don't waste recording time, which is very precious in the TV industry, being distracted by outside noises, like a dog that really, really wants to go for a walk. Hi, Piper. Now I am about to take Piper for a walk and one of the easiest things you can do to maintain good focus and be able to talk no matter what distractions are going on in the background is stick to your daily meditation. And for many people, it can be as simple as taking the dog for a walk. Don't overthink it. So that's one of my best performing tip videos. And, you know, you might think it's a little too unprofessional to post to LinkedIn, but I gave it a run on LinkedIn and people absolutely adored it too. You know, it's it's one of those things that just shows an insight into me having a real life. My, my frustrated little puppy was not harmed in the making. I did it in one take. 
you know, one of the main pain points that people tell me about their um, lack of confidence on camera is that they have to do a thousand takes and then they don't end up posting anything. You know, if, if something that's holding you back from posting is that you've got stuff going on in the background of your video, but your message still lands or you've found a way because you can think on your feet and you use your daily meditation, whether it is formal meditation or doing something as simple as taking the dog for a walk that just allows you a moment to defrag the brain. They are the things that help you perform under pressure. And being on camera is a high pressure environment. You know, TV presenters are paid and people like myself in lifestyle television and travel television, we're paid to be able to contend with all these distractions out there on the road. It's really hot. You know, you go to beautiful locations that look incredible in all the pictures. The drone footage is amazing. But, you know, half of that's overlaid. You could be lying, you know, sitting there in Port Hedland in the middle of July, as I was last year, getting blasted by sand and you're sweating. You're trying to not look like you're glowing on camera. It's really distracting. So refining the art as a presenter of being able to just tune out those distractions, focus on your message and that person you're talking to. You know, that's the stuff that's going to help you nail that first take and get a product that you can actually post to your socials. Now, I created that particular video all by myself. I know there's some tech issues with it. I'm, I always say I'm a, I'm a presenting coach. I'm definitely not a video coach in terms of how to make your videos. But look, Clipscribe is really handy for doing that. It can give you that banner up the top. It can give you the countdown. It can work in any kind of landscape or portrait format for all platforms. And it puts those, ca um, those captions in very, very effectively. Um, you can even select which accent you would like it to use, which I think is really, really handy too. So it knows our Aussie English. You can put in any kind of accent that you happen to have. So I really do wholeheartedly and without any kind of affiliate link, I recommend Clipscribe for getting started. Otherwise, you can just send off your, um, your videos to Rev or something like that and have them uh, transcribe and put the captions in for you. Um, I don't recommend trying to enter them in yourself because it's just a headache. Okay, so get this next ha hack of course and i've mentioned this already always add value you know it's a really effective way to deal with any imposter syndrome you might be experiencing think back to yourself 20 years ago is there something that you wish you knew before you embarked on that journey share it you know what did you wish you knew when you first got set about writing a book is there something that you can actually including your video content that's going to help that next person you know and if you deny that person from learning from what you've learned it's it's a little bit mean you know and and if the main reason you're not doing it is because you don't think you've got the right gear or you don't think you look good enough or you don't think you have a place to share what you've learned then you're denying them that chance it's 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 not about you you know and some of the greatest breakthroughs on the on the one-on-one -on -one programs have been with people who have had very very successful careers you know long careers in one particular industry and earned a lot of money doing it built amazing businesses and they'll still say to me oh but what would anyone have to learn from me you know and when we've been able to unlock for them that their knowledge could actually change the world you know, that, that, that they see the responsibility in that and they're really empowered by that. You know, one great example comes to mind is a baker that I worked with on the very first one-on-one -on -one coaching program for confidence on camera who didn't even pose for photos on her wedding day because she was that concerned about being seen on camera. And she was shaking when she even just called me to inquire about doing the confidence on camera program. But we were able to unlock her expertise by reminding her that her knowledge around how to whip together a shortbread or how to make a cake from scratch could actually change the way families interact. She loves the idea that by sharing a recipe for brownies, you could have a 10 year old get into the kitchen and make something for his or her family instead of opening another packet. You know, and this is her wonderful expertise. And, and as, as Alden mentioned, it's her potential legacy. You know, what a beautiful thing to unlock for a person who didn't even want to show their face on camera on their wedding day. 
you know, now she delivers this on camera because she knows that it's about so much more than her. So think about the value that you can add at a meta level, but also for those quick wins. What are the quick things you can do to help your audience and they will reward you? For that so some other you know video ideas that might add value um, you can answer your faqs everybody's got them and it's a great way to come up with content in general as you probably already know common challenges faced by your clients i always ask people inquire um, with me what they're going through what's the thing that's challenging you at the minute just so i get an understanding of what's going on in their minds and i can make content to respond to it comment on any news item you know something I'm pretty big on a person who's always followed the news always commented on the news myself I've always 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 called experts to talk about things so a pilot much like Rod you know you would have you'd call someone like that for an for a bit of insight into a, a crash into something that's going on in the news right now so you know if you can just jump on and create that video content yourself these days you don't have to wait for the media to call you I'm sure Alden's mentioned this many times before if you put it out there they'll come knocking you can also include a video in your pitch so if you're sending a quick pitch to a tv or radio newsroom in particular why not just record what you would say into a one to two minute video even less and they would probably just being staff resource and you know just so low on people they would generally just lift the audio as long as you give them all the credits and things you need to be mentioned they'd probably just use it and it saves you so much time and you can also share case studies from your client's experience of working with you. I do this by interviewing my clients because it's really hard sometimes to get your clients to take the time to write a testimonial or record a testimonial, have you noticed? Um, same as reviews. So yeah, I've started recording them. The other thing you can do that I think is really smart is just record a testimonial yourself, like a case study, as in do what I did just then, talk about a person from your course with their permission and share their experience of working with you or whatever it is that you're selling, share their experience of it. You can even compare two cases of people that you've worked in with recently and they're very effective ways to get those case studies out there. More ideas here, you know, interviewing other industry professionals, other experts who can help your clients solve their common challenges and problems and host lives, asking your viewers to ask you anything like Aldrin does to really great effect. Um, so I thought I'd share with you this example from my one-on-one -on -one client Tracy Green during the pandemic Tracy who runs a tourism related business over in New Zealand you know you can only start to imagine how her business was affected I can actually put that into numbers for you according to Tracy she lost 90% of her business overnight she had to let go of her staff and she was really genuinely wondering where her next dollar was going to come from but she resolved to keep things ticking over when it was down to just her and all of her stakeholders and businesses that she'd been supporting were facing imminent closure. She started going Facebook Live every single week. And at first it was just to kind of check in and offer a few marketing tips or just a bit of support. And slowly it grew through the Confidence on Camera program to you know, really targeted content that we strategized together to get the maximum benefit to her and her business. And I'm pleased to say that directional tourism survived more than pivoted and has now become a marketing business for tourism related businesses in New Zealand and they are thriving. You know, they, they really through this and through the people that they met making these, this content every, content every single week, um, discovered their next direction and a way to survive in a place and a time where most tourism businesses right now and travel agents are, you know, really, really struggling. And, and if not, they're looking like they won't survive. So I think I can play a little bit of this for you. I won't play it all, but this is a great interview that Tracy did where, where she got outside of her industry. She interviewed a farmer and talk to him about resilience. He's a man known as the resilient farmer and the response she got from the tourism industry at large and New Zealand at large, who were all having to be a little bit more resilient right now was very, very good. So any content you can do that, that whilst remaining in your niche still pushes you out to more people the same way broadcasters do is a really smart thing. Hey there, what have I got in common with a farmer? Actually, nothing at all, but our tourism industry does. And we can learn a few things from how farmers deal with 
drought, uh, the down times and the good times. Now, my name is Tracy from Directional Tourism and thank you for joining us for another Facebook Live. Now, if you're enjoying what we're providing, please pop a like down there just to let us know that we're doing a good job so that we keep doing what we're doing. Now, today, I am super excited to have with me Doug Avery, the resilient farmer. Doug, welcome. That's uh, really good to be here, Tracy. See you. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, and thank you for coming to my home because not normally I don't normally get a chance to have people in person. So this is really, really exciting. Yeah, you know, it's good um, pretty much on the flesh. And, of course, if you'd like to watch the rest of it, I won't um, sort of go through all of that. It went for quite a while, as you can see. Um, he's a really great character and got a lot of great insight. And, you know, and, and Tracy had never interviewed anybody before we got started, and that was her very first interview. It was a big one to start with. And so there are a few little awkward moments in there still, but you can see how natural and, and relaxed she was about her own on-camera performance. So it meant that that hurdle of learning to interview somebody was that much easier for her. And look, she's continued to use these strategies in her business. As you can see at the end of that video, everything else that pops up is a video of Tracy and her business. So it's it's very, very effective marketing. And everywhere she goes, people are telling her that they're seeing her in her videos. So the awareness factor is huge. Now, um, tapping into your ideas bank for extracting your expertise this is a really handy brainstorming tool. It's called the content wheel. It's a really great thing you can do. Start by, you know, listing your brand identity and just list the various things that you can talk about in each of those areas and populate them out. Topic one through six. Some of us, you know, we might only have one or two. That's okay. But then around each one of those topics that you have some form of expertise in, fill it out with a bunch of other subtopics. And that's really going to help you come up with ideas for that. You know, if you'd like a copy of the content wheel template, I'm happy to just set that out to you and um, you can have a go at generating your own ideas. Now, the next thing that you can do right now to grow your Instagram influence in particular, put your expertise on display is use Reels. This, this is where I will look at you guys. Um, have you? Has, does everyone know what Reels are as a starting point? No. So Reels is the Instagram answer to TikTok. And I've learned this from working with a really great social media coach here in Perth. Her name's Brooke Volinovich of The Social Club. I can give full credit to Brooke for inspiring me to get over feeling old about using Reels, okay? So as soon as I heard about Reels, I was like, no, I can't make quirky, funny 15 second videos. I can't dance on camera. If you've seen TikTok, it's a lot of that kind of thing. And Reels is just the same thing all over again. But she inspired me to talk about my business and share my expertise the same way I do on my other video content through Reels. And the good thing that's happening with Reels right now is that Instagram wants you to use them. So much like they wanted us to use IGTV a little while ago, right now they want all of us to be making reels and they are pushing people who make reels, not just our reels, but also the things around our reels. So normal posts into everybody else's feeds. So they reward your use of reels. So I think they recommend you make like three reels a day or something. It's ridiculous. No one, uh, people do. I don't recommend trying to keep up with that and have a life or a business. But if you haven't started using reels yet then I do recommend you give it a go here's an example of one where I jumped onto a trend and I'm I'm sharing it because I'm I must say I'm a little embarrassed by it but I'm sharing it because I want to prove that you know even if you're turning 40 this year you can dance on the internet I'm hoping that it allows oh, I have to drag it over here for you guys one second um and can I bring it back to the beginning wait for it I want to give you some sound. You can't see me dancing without sound. Um, oh, this is a fun when the tech kind of doesn't happen the way you wanted it to. You might not be able to hear this. I wonder if you can see it from my presenter view. Nope, here. As if you would like a closer look at that, feel free to go and follow me over it on camera with Carmen. I'm dancing to a pop song called So Pretty and everybody had been using this particular format of a reel to show a glow up where suddenly they had heaps of makeup on and were unrecognizable. I left the glow up part out and just wanted to illustrate that you don't even need makeup on. You don't need to know how to dance in order to show up on camera for your business. Yeah. And 
that's you know looking for a trend and kind of making the most of it. And it's one of the most um the best performing reels that i've done i've done a bunch of them where i stand around in the full studio with the makeup and all the lights and the things i would do for tv they don't tend to resonate anywhere near as well as that one so a little bit of a, a lesson in there and they're yeah, using music they yeah reels just work with music i've been doing a few talky ones too but um i intersperse them with a fair bit of music because the accounts that are using them are just really going through the roof. So that's one to think about. A few rules for reels, um, keep them short and sharp. You've only got one second for people to watch you do almost anything on the internet. The same applies with reels. Um, captions. As you saw, you can add in those, those captions to explain what's actually the message behind your reel. But if you're talking, you can just, because it's generally only 15 to 30 seconds, so, or even less than 15 seconds. So it won't take you long to just punch out the key points of what you're actually saying and add those in using the app. Look for trends or, you know, so that you can make those your own, like I tried to do there with the So Pretty Glow Up and have a bit of fun with it. You know, no one's going to hang you out to dry for having fun. Fun is a brand quality that we that we respect these days. You'll notice, you know, have you seen the way uh, social media managers for the big corporates like a, a Woolies and, and some of the banks, you know, they're employing people who are witty and, and fun to engage with people in the comments on their posts. They want to be viewed as fun these days and you definitely can too. If you're still stuck for ideas, reshoot or repurpose any other videos or posts you've already done. Show any before or after transformations, a day in the life, go behind the scenes of a workplace, uh, do really quick tips if things uh, to camera, anything that's a how-to. Just teach us something that we don't already know. It doesn't have to be in your niche. Remember, it can just be something that you're good at, that you have a hobby or a passion for. And string together pictures of your work. You don't have to have video even to get started making reels. So that's definitely one to explore. All right, next I want you to get comfortable watching yourself. This is an important hack. And it took me way too long. I didn't watch anything back that I did on camera for 10 years, maybe longer. Uh, I didn't even watch episodes of Destination WA when they came up, I'd sort of walk out the room. And that is the quickest way to not improve. You know, the sooner you get comfortable being your own coach, analyzing your performance. If there are, you know, all historic appearances you've done somewhere, maybe rip the bandaid off and sit down and watch it. Here's my tips for watching it over. You can watch it over twice once with the volume down and then watch it over again the second time with the volume up. And that will help you uh, get a sense first of whether or not your body language and your facial expressions actually match the tone of what you're trying to talk about. Uh, you can check whether or not your hands are distracting, things like that. I have to really watch my hands. I'm a real hand talker. Um, and the other thing that the um, then on when the volume is up, you can actually figure out whether your message is actually landing. And that's the really important stuff. So the sooner you get comfortable watching yourself back is absolutely the better because your obsession with the way you look is holding you back. If that's something that I wish I could tell people that I wish I could have told myself 20 years ago, I wish I knew this earlier. If I just focused a little less on the looks and the hair and the makeup and the what I was wearing and a little more on the content of what I actually had to say. I, I found it easy to do on radio. You know, there wasn't that perceived pressure to have to look a certain way. But, you know, if I prepared for my television gigs more by actually, and my television auditions more by actually, you know, pumping a bit of substance into what I had to say instead of worrying about what they'd think about the wrinkles under my eyes or my double chin or my perceived bad skin or my weight problem or whatever it was I'd sort of decided was an issue. You know, I would have had a better success, I think, of actually engaging with the lens of the camera and delivering really effective content on camera. But I also would have felt better. You know, I used to do TV, catch a glimpse of how crummy I thought it looked, even though people all around the country, when I'd appear on national television like Today or Weekend Today or Sunrise, you know, people would message and say, wow, well, I saw you on TV, you know, because I lived all over Australia. But I would still, instead of hearing, you were great, I would think, yeah but I look terrible. You know, it used to keep me awake at night. So the sooner you can depart from this, the absolute better. So why is it, if we consider it rude to re react to other people with all these judgments about them, 
that we do it ourselves. And that's something I do like to examine a lot in the Confidence on Camera program. You know, just being a little bit kinder to yourself the same way you would anybody else. You know, if somebody you knew had appeared on TV, you wouldn't walk up to them and go, oh, bad clothing choice. You know, you would never do that. You would never even do that, would you? Because we know that that would cause them a major amount of distress. So if you can, as you watch yourself back, use the same kindness that you would for yourself and just remind yourself that, yeah, look, you might have chosen the wrong thing to wear that time, but there will be another time and you can fix it for next time. That's the other great thing about the internet. You know, you might think, oh, things are there forever, but if you really want to, you can take it down. <laughs> so, you know, don't worry about it. So be your own coach. Watch back a couple of times over, once with the volume down and then again with the volume up. And there's the various uh, things that you can look for as you're doing that. You've probably heard that really excellent book um, by Brian Tracy called Eat That Frog. I think it's been around at least a couple of decades, hasn't it? It's, it was one of the first kind of businessy or management things I was ever exposed to working in breakfast radio over in Colac, Victoria. A guy called Grant Johnston told me about Eat That Frog. He was my co-host and general manager because that's what happens in regional radio. You kind of work side by side with people who are doing multiple roles. I was also the copywriter. Um, but as he explained to me, if you've got this one really difficult thing to do, you should get it done. That's the ethos behind Eat That Frog. And the watching yourself back thing, that, that, that hack is really the, that's the eat the frog of the confidence on camera ethos. You've just got to get used to it. So then I want you to talk about the things that your customer cares about. And this is, you know, this is where I start to remind you, it's not really relevant whether it's part of your business. It doesn't have to be something specifically for your business. You just want to cast the net wide and talk about things that people who would like your business actually care about. So start thinking outside of the box, like my one-on-one -on -one client, Ashley Goodchild. Now, Ashley is a property manager here in Perth. One of her goals is to raise the profile of property management. Have you noticed that there's always real estate agents who are out there selling houses, who put themselves out there in video. Um, she really wants to build an online influence. She's got a great community of property managers here in Perth, and she wanted to raise that kind of profile of the industry by um, increasing her online presence. We did that using a really cool video strategy, and she's taken it on now in leaps and bounds. One of my favourite videos that she shared recently has absolutely nothing to do with property management whatsoever. Every time we have this discussion, you know, amongst our girlfriends, people are saying their food shop is $300, $400, $500 a week. And I love a bit of a challenge to see how cheap I can get my shopping bill each week. <laughs> um, so I, and I have, I get a lot of people give me shit over it because they're like, Ash, you know, are you feeding your children enough? You know, the poor things, they're eating toast and scrambled eggs. Um, and they, you know, give me a bit of shit over it. But I wanted to show you my three tips. Now, I know it's not real estate related, but I do have a lot of people on my social media who have kids and are busy working. And a lot of you guys are also recently single, so you might be wanting to be on a budget as well. So I wanted to show you and give you my tips, and hopefully it works now I've got school going back next week. Um, so first tip, I get all my... And in the interest of time, I will I'll leave Ashley's presentation there. Please go and look up Ashley Goodchild or at uh, Perth Property Manager. I think she is on Instagram. She's someone who's doing really great video content that will inspire you. She's done really good stuff with LinkedIn. And, you know, that piece of content for Instagram, I think, is perfect because she's speaking to investors who very often are thrifty people. She's also speaking to tenants who at the minute are facing some of the highest rent prices in history. So money saving tips are a really good thing. And these are very effective ones. She has what a Brady Bunch family. I think she's got like six kids between her and her partner and they feed them for whatever she said, under 200 bucks a week. It's extraordinary. It's really good stuff. Um, this other one, you know, uh, again, something that's not directly related to your industry. I talk through the outfits that I wear on TV and and they go so well for me in my video content. I've decided to leave it in as a regular thing. I, um, I'll also share outfits that I wear for corporate MC work too. 
talk to women and and men uh, some of the men aren't necessarily watching but it's a great way to connect with women who are in a corporate setting it's good marketing for me so outfit of the day videos um it's so much easier as well than taking a, an amazing photo of an outfit if you just stop and take a, a video of it and if, have think about things that are easier for you to video then take a photo of and turn those into a video because uh, the outfit of the day one, I wish I'd been doing it for years. I've worn some amazing clothes and I only started doing it in the last couple of months. Um, bonus, amplify any PR that you get. If you're not already doing this, I imagine Alden's reminded you of this. If you do end up on TV, it should be going straight in as video content to your social media all over the place. Um, do, do uh, any of these things, you know, ask for that high quality footage when you've been on TV, share it to your website, your email list and on your socials, use it in your stories and reels to show behind the scenes, like when you go into the TV station or if they're coming to record something, shoot those behind the scenes images and upload them, record a video where you talk about what it was like to appear on TV, that's a video you could do today, Rod, you know, share how it felt to be interviewed in those circumstances. Um, and then, of course, use um, artwork from your TV appearances in your Facebook ads. It's a really smart way to increase your credibility factor because even though less people watch TV, there's still something about TV and broadcast media in general that people associate with credibility. So sometimes an appearance on TV or radio isn't as important as the amplification of what you can do with it to increase the way people view the way that you are doing business um, on your social media. I make a lot of use of the stuff that I've done over the years in the media and I put that onto a dedicated media page on my website. So there's a little scan through of how that could potentially look for you once you've built up a bank. And you could do this with your podcast appearances and on your vlog appearances and your website, um, on your webinar appearances and things like that too. And they are my five hacks for confidence on camera. Keep keeping an eye on the uh, on the time. I'm, I've finished with eight minutes to spare, so there's hopefully a bit of time for some questions. <laughs> Yay! That was awesome, Carmen. Thank you so much. Wow, I could listen to you all day. That was absolutely brilliant. And last. <laughs> oh, it was it was fantastic. And you know, a lot of what you share, I also share when I do media training. So I love how aligned we are with what we're saying. And you you mentioned meditation, and mm -hmm. so I mentioned media page. In fact, I have I have seven awesome steps to get free publicity, and the E yeah. of the awesome is to explode your impact and that is to make the most of your media appearances and one of my clients actually uh, who is the organizer of the mast exhibition being opening opening on the gold coast at the one arts gallery on friday night anyone on the gold coast or in the area you're welcome to come along 5 30 to 7 30 this friday night uh, we were just on abc radio this morning we're going to be on juice fm tomorrow morning and so this morning one of the things we did as soon as we were in the studio we got photos in the studio with tom forbes the interviewer it will be it was a pre-record today it will be on air at 6 40 a.m tomorrow morning on mm -hmm. ABC breakfast on the Gold Coast for anyone who's in the area 91.7 FM. And then we are going to be live in the studio at Juice FM tomorrow morning with the organisers of the Mast Exhibition, which is celebrating COVID medical heroes. It's a multicultural arts exhibition. It's going to be brilliant on Friday. And that is live in the studio. So, of course, we'll get more photos as a way to amplify that media that we're getting and we'll tag all the media outlets when we put it on our social media. So, you know, there's so much you can do and, you know, so many amazing tips you gave today, Karma. It's absolutely brilliant. So who has some questions? Uh, we have about six minutes left for the, the schedule here, but we may go just a little bit over time because we've got giveaways to do as well. So Rod, yes, unmute yourself. If I can, and Carmen, thank you very much. I found that incredibly interesting. If I can make a couple of comments and you can come back. Perfection, I've done a few talks and as I said, a couple of TV interviews. We strive for perfection, uh, which is not necessarily correct because I tell you in my... Um, talks or presentation, I mentioned a couple of aircraft accidents which tragically kill people. Now, the first few times that I did that, I got very emotional and, and choked up. And so I tried to cut that out and become perfect, be the perfect host sort of thing or the presenter. And people said, don't do that, Rod. That shows the public that you are human, that you do have emotions. You're just not a, a face up there talking. So 
So I agree with exactly what you said, and I've learned out of that. Um, another point is Facebook over here, SA Police have a, a very good presence on obviously uh, Facebook and, and the other social media. And every now and then they put a humorous thing in. You know, normally police news is very tragic, sad, etc. But every now and then they have very good writers who, who do it and they'll talk about the horses, the police horses or something like that and add a, a, a little funny antidote to it, which I think is, is superb. The other thing I'll just point out, self-criticism I think is very good, but it's a very fine line between what you said, like I could class it self-criticism and the obsession. It's a very fine line that you can look at yourself and say, well, I could have presented that better, but exactly as you were saying about the obsession, don't get obsessed with clothes or, or whatever. Make sure you get the message out there. Yeah, the message has got to be the focus, hasn't it? You know, and, and there are so many elements of your on-camera performance that you can pick up from speaking. You know, have you, have you hooked suitably? Have you created a reason for people to hang around and hear what you've got to say? You know, these are the things that, that lead towards your message landing. And, you know, I'd rather you redo a video if you must redo a video, but really please try and just get it to one take. That's the goal of the Confidence on Camera program to get you to the stage where you'll be so much more efficient in the studio. But if you're going to redo a video, do it because the message was wrong or it didn't land the way you needed it to. And you might be deceiving someone even, you know, like if, it, if it's that dire, yeah, look, redo it. But I never redo a video because, you know, you think your hair could look better or your eyes could look better or, you know, people would much rather get that genuineness from you. And, and that's why I plow on. If the dog barks, I think, well, what can I say about that? If the kids walk in, what can I actually say about that? And I'll tell you what, it's, it's really powerful. The amount of people who talk to me about those videos over and above, you know, the really fascinating, fully researched video I did about, I don't know, you know, imposter syndrome or something like that. You know, they, they would much rather engage with me on the real ones. If I can ask one further question, please, Owen. Um, yes, the concentrating on the camera lens as opposed to the presenter or the two million people, I can do that for a while and then after 10 seconds or 15 seconds, the subconscious part of the mind starts to wander. Now, how do you bring it back to just the, the lens? It's muscle memory, Rod. It's one of those things that television and radio presenters have spent a really long time practising. And that's why my programs are a bit longer and why I don't do many in-person one-day workshops anymore because you can give people that skill set, but if they don't go and practise it, they're just not going to get any better. So if you can set yourself some time to practice, challenge yourself to take opportunities where you are going to be speaking in that interview format, you'll get better. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that point because there's some presenters say you should always look at the lens of the camera. And for me, it always feels a little bit weird because <laughs> I like to look at people's faces when I'm speaking to them. And of course, if you're being interviewed on TV, you never look directly at the camera. You look at the person who's interviewing you, which is just generally just to the side of the camera. So mm -hmm. it's fascinating. Although I do... I, I do would say that, you know, as someone who is in an audience, if someone is speaking directly to the lens, I do feel that they are speaking straight to me. So mm -hmm. as a viewer, it feels better if someone speaks directly to the lens. It just feels weird as a presenter. So it takes some practice, I guess, like everything, you know, everything's hard until it becomes easy, right? Yeah, I've got a great speaking coach called Simone Heng. She's over in Singapore and also X radio And she has discovered through her work as an international speaker on on Zoom uh, and because of her career taking off during this time she said the etiquette apparently is to speak to camera when you're answering a question or when you are the presenter and then when you're listening look down and listen at that person nod give them those visual cues back so for a Zoom room yeah set of circumstances yeah yeah brilliant brilliant now I know Christina has a question now we're just about coming to eight o'clock is that okay if we just go a little bit over time for those who are on the live zoom is that okay we'll just go because we've got giveaways to do but we want to get through the questions and I know people loving this on Facebook Kerry Joyce says this amazing content and some people missed a few of the slides Christina Kerry so if you missed any of the slides just go back to the recording because it's all there it's been live streamed all into the mass media tribe group so you can just go back at your leisure and catch anything that you missed out on okay Christina Welcome. Oh, hi there. Hi there. 
Um, I'm actually a signature brand stylist and I do actually focus a lot on people, what they wear and their colours. And I've also done TV presenting as well. So I find that quite interesting when people say it isn't as important, whereas from my perspective, being in the fashion industry a very long time, three and a half decades, I find that what you wear is important because yeah. people can switch off or switch on. If you're wearing the wrong colour, and you're not sounding good, your energy isn't there, it can really be distracting. And I really, really, really tried to listen to some experts, but just simply because they haven't got those elements in place, I found it very challenging. So I had to close my eyes. (laughs) And I guess that's because we all learn differently, don't we? We all have different to respond to. Yeah, yeah. And, it, it, and it's interesting because I, mean, I come from that industry, so I guess it's going to be more important to me, but if I didn't have this knowledge, it wouldn't be as important, I suppose. So it is yeah. about just show up and just make your mark. So yeah. And that. don't get me wrong, I do focus a lot on, you know, the <laughs> do's and don'ts of TV and what we should wear and, and which looks best on camera, but I, I definitely find at the stage that most people I'm encountering who I'm working with, you know, it's really about just putting all that aside, you know, just finding a way to get through that hurdle. Once you know the do's and don'ts, you know, let's focus on what you've got to say. Let's get you that great press. And yeah. then you can really take it next level with someone yeah, like so, Yeah. Yeah. So get started. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Awesome yeah. presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and Christina's amazing. I'm going to be interviewing Christina on Friday. We're talking about be seen, heard, and amplify your brand 1 p.m. on Friday. Oh, so, <laughs> so tune into that. It'll be live. And of course, your comments we can put up on the screen and any questions you have for Christina. She's phenomenal and she's absolute expert when it comes to fashion and style and, and uh, amazing lady. So uh, I just read your chapter. I've got an upcoming chapter coming out. I've, I've, I've had the sneak peak of her chapter do you want to talk quickly about that Christina can you mention that the book coming out yes I decided after five decades I was coming out of hiding and I was going to share why I became so good at what I do and why I stayed in the industry as long as what I had and that the birth of my children was actually the reason to uh, become real and authentic with the public about who I am when you work in the top echelons in fashion you can become very distant from the uh, public. And 20 years ago when I came to Queensland, it was sort of like my birthing process of getting real and authentic and becoming me. So that chapter is all about, um, yeah, just becoming human and like everyone else and um, and, and just sharing all, all of my journey and my stories. So, yes. Brilliant, brilliant, Christine. I love the chapter. And Nakaman, you mentioned bullying as well in your background. Now, I was bullied as a child as well, growing up in the northern beaches area of Sydney as a first generation Australian. So I have Greek, Turkish, Ukrainian background. And it's it's phenomenal how nasty some children can be. And you know, before I did any personal development, I used to take all that criticism to heart. And I was depressed and and very rebellious for a long time. In fact, during that whole table tennis period too, I got kicked out of home at 15 after rebelling against my uh, my father, my very strict European dad. Whatever he said not Whatever he said to do, I would do the opposite, right? I would do the, and so after two years of doing the opposite of everything my dad said to do, he eventually kicked me out of home and I went from ducks of my primary primary school to failing everything in year 11. And then after seeing my boyfriend sleep with my best friend in front of me at age 16, turning point, I called my mum in tears. I said, I can't handle this anymore. She said, come home. And then I changed my environment, went from Mossman High School to Forest High School, for anyone who knows Sydney, and worked my butt off and got into a media degree. So there was a really rocky period that I went through there. But you know what? I wouldn't change anything because that all helped me become a stronger person. And all our challenges, I know Christina's had a lot of challenges too of abuse, et cetera. And a a lot of people I know have had abuse in the past of some sort, whether it's emotional, mental, physical. And it's not about what happens to us or what happens for us as some people say everything happens for you not to you right so looking for the gifts in everything that happens and it's in those lowest moments in our lives where at the end of every breakdown there's always a breakthrough and looking for the lessons and the learnings in all of those low periods of life that make our story right your x factor is your story and everyone's story is different and there will be absolute gems in your story that the media are wanting to hear and the world is wanting to hear the world is waiting for you to share your story Story. And so building confidence on camera now, this is not just something that would be a nice to have. I think this is a must have. 
I, I really do believe this is a must have now for your business, for your personal life, for you to step up to be the best version of yourself that you can be so you can inspire the world around you and you can you can make the impact that you are here to make. I truly believe that after years of depression and being going through a lot of self-harm, I, I drank a lot, I smoked a lot for many years. I, I just want, I really wanted to die for a long time. I didn't want to be here. I hated the world. And thank goodness I've come out of that. I've come out the other end and I've done a hell of a lot of personal development now. And I love my life now, absolutely love my life. And so passionate and committed to, to seeing that for others. You know, and I still have my low moments sometimes. I still get emotional sometimes on camera. And that's okay. You know, it's okay to be vulnerable and to share from the heart. So I went on a bit of a tangent there. Anyway, any other questions for, <laughs> for Carmen? Any other questions for Carmen before we go to our giveaways? Any on, anyone on Facebook want to ask any questions? You do need to be on the live Zoom for the chance to win some prizes tonight. Okay, Cam. Oh, Kerry says the camera focus tip is a great one. She loved that. Excellent, Kerry. Great to see that. Uh, and uh, any other questions before we go to the giveaways? Any other comments? Questions, comments? What did we get out of Carmen's talk? What are some things you're going to take away and do? I love what you said, Carmen, about watch the video twice. Watch yourself twice. Watch it with the sound and without the sound. I think that is absolute gold. Really important to do that and to bring that kindness to yourself. As you say, you know, my girlfriend says to me, all the love that's there for others, Aldrin, she says, that's also there for you, right? <laughs> 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 so Louisa says great advice excellent what did you get out of the presentation love to hear from you just pop into the comments or just unmute yourself if you're on the live zoom unmute yourself what did you get what are some of the key things you got from Carmen's talk and what are some things you're going to do differently moving forward we'd like to share Okay, everyone is jumping at the opportunity. Rod, good on you. Over to yeah, you. <laughs> Carmen, I, I take on board exactly what you said. And with um, with print media, because of the constrictions now in staff, etc., they don't have time to send a reporter out or a photographer and things like that. But I note that if you email in a story, they will quite possibly look at it. So I'm going to take up your advice and probably do my own little video and uh, and put that on social media and also put it to other people. So very good advice once again. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really smart one because if you don't get the story, you can just put it out through your socials anyway. And so I've done that a lot with articles I've written over the years. I've been published occasionally by news.com or Nine Honey or something like that. And if it doesn't come off, I just blog it. You know, or I'll, you know, or I'll make a video about it. So you can do exactly the same thing. It's not a waste of your time anymore to pitch to the media because you're creating content for you. Yeah, great point. And you mentioned, you know, do videos on frequently asked questions. I think that's a great idea. And there's a guy called Mike Keenings from America who years ago, he said, he said, do 10 videos up to three minutes each answering 10 frequently asked questions, FAQs, as well as 10 should ask questions, some SAQs as well. So that's another thing you could take on is actually doing 20 three-minute videos, which are brilliant for LinkedIn and brilliant for people with short attention spans, just short little tidbits of business information uh, are brilliant as well. So that was great, Carmen. Now, Rebecca says, drop the perfectionism and focus on the message. Excellent, Rebecca. Yes, she put that in the chat. That's something she's got out of it. What did the rest of you get out of it? Louis, are you with us? Louis, uh, anyone else? Mike, what did you get out of it? What are some things, some gems you got out of tonight? Or just one thing you got out of tonight? What's something you got from tonight? Love to hear from you, Louisa. If you'd like to share, just unmute yourself. Christina, are you putting your hand up? Um, yes, I just wanted to share. Um, I love that tip about get into reels, start dancing and have some fun. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> I was really scared at first, but I think once you realize you can cut, once you watch a bit more of it, you get to the stage where I think you think I can apply my message to that, you know, and you get inspired by what other people are doing and yeah, look for a spin on it. Yeah, absolutely. Now I popped a bit of info me, on Insta. Insta. Uh, sorry, Mike, what was that? For me, it's the uh, um, lose the perfectionism. Mm. that's really yes. important and 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 I learned um to do the videos and and post them on my channel YouTube channel mm. um and on Facebook and and everything it doesn't matter if they're if they're good or not but I, after 10 years or 20 years they'll be good 
Yeah, a bit of practice. And remember that you've got all this expertise that you're offering your client base. You know, as soon as I heard that you're good with startup businesses, I was thinking, oh gosh, what could I learn from this guy? You know, I've got a thousand questions for you. So think about what my questions might be and answer them one by one in a video. Don't do one big video where you answer them. Just start one video, answer one question and just yes. focus on one thing per video. The idea of, of, of FAQ, yeah. short videos on it, on uh, FAQs is is really good idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, FAQs and, and SAQs. Credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely for credibility, bite sized chunks, and SAQs should ask questions is another mm -hmm. one too. You could do ten should ask questions. Mm -hmm. So I put some information on Instagram Reels in the chat. I put it on Facebook and I put it in the Zoom chat here. It actually only launched on August 5, 2020, believe it or not. And it's and uh, online it says it's a new way to create and discover short entertaining videos on Instagram. It invites you to create fun videos to share with your friends and just record and edit 15 second multi clip videos. A lot of them I'm seeing a lot of people are doing like just little short like two second three second really short ones and like heaps and heaps of really short videos. Uh, with audio effects and new creative tools. So music, adding music to your videos is really cool now. I've noticed on a lot of Instagram posts and titling and getting creative. And you can just spend hours and hours. I mean, TikTok, you can just totally go down a rabbit hole. Of, I mean, I, I've got a few things on TikTok and I, I must say I haven't done much on there, but some people are making amazing money and getting great leads from TikTok, believe it or not. Christina. I just wanted to say um, something really cool I've been doing is when I um, put a little blurb or something in my Facebook stories, I always try and find music to match the word. And it really works because you're reinforcing that message like courage to change. So I'll type something like that in. Some kind of piece of music will come up, various artists, and I'll pick the one that really resonates. And you just keep reinforcing it through the music, through the text, and, you know, and even if you're saying something on video, so that's a really cool little tip oh, that dear. makes it look so, um, you know, like it, it's my creative background. You know, I love magazines, fashion, been around that for a long time where everything must, you know, feel amazing and look amazing. So you match your text to the mood and the colours and all that kind of stuff because it gives that a visual feast when someone's looking at it. And since I started doing that, like I would get easy over, you know, 130, 150 people will click on that image wow. and it's like what is she doing what is she doing what is she up to and it's nothing much it's just like what is that girl doing <laughs> you know and it just when they get in there the music and it, you know music is the medium that can change your mood in one second mm -hmm. and so you pick the right piece of music and the right content and the right visual stimulation you've got a winner mm -hmm. so you know yeah, it just works that. Yeah. yeah, same thing with your reels. It's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, I'll try the reels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make them reels. Instagram will reward you, particularly at the moment. That's the current advice. Yeah, they will reward awesome, you. Awesome, awesome. Yes, as as they Thank do whenever, you. and of course, Facebook owns Instagram. So whenever they bring out new features, whenever you use those new features, which are constantly changing, of course, as the media changes, mass media world is consistently changing. Out of seven point eight billion people on the planet now, three point eight billion active social media users now about half the world's population using social media facebook only started in 2004 that's not that long to have half the world's population on this new media so if you don't embrace social media you will be left behind people are going to be googling you they want to see what you're up to they want to connect more than ever now i believe um, now kerry has asked a question she says are reels kerry joy on facebook uh, feed are real stories on instagram are they the same thing yeah, uh, she's no, asking. No, no, two different things. That's right. So a reel appears in a separate little universe on Instagram that is called Reels. And you can make your reel and post it into your post feed as normal. So the same as where your square feed. Um, and I, I do encourage you to select that option to show in your feed. Same as you would if you were posting any longer videos, like an IGTV that's over a minute 15, I think. So if you're making an IGTV, if you're making a reel, select the option, show in feed so that your, your normal existing followers, the ones who already love you, you know, and will engage with that, that reel, you want them to see it. And if they engage with it and they like it, that's going to push it into the algorithm and get more views over there in the reels universe. And the good thing about reels, I didn't probably really mention, is that they are pushed out to that reels universe where people you don't already have a connection with people who aren't following you will see it 
that's where the money comes in with those because you're being exposed to this whole other audience of people and they rack up views really, really quickly because they're so short. So some of my reels, you know, you get, um, you get thousands and thousands of views really quickly and they get massive reach as a result. So yeah, you'll, you'll, um, it'll be well worth doing. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, Carmen. And Kerry was also asking what was the app for the footer typing? Oh, for, yeah, captions, yeah, it's called Clipscribe. I'll write it in the comments now. Clipscribe, yep. And the pricing ranges from $8 to $24 per month. I presume that's US, is that right, Carmen? I think it is US, yeah. There's a, there's a free trial period at the start that is really useful that I used. And then I think I just went to the cheapest. But I, I think there are some, I can't quite remember how many elements you can use for free, but it was pretty good for free for a while and I only increased it once. I think I know what it was. I just wanted to do more of them. So once you've done maybe five a month, that's enough for free, then you need to start charging. They charge you. So it's, it's, it's a cap on how many videos right. you can make for free. Right, right. But it'd be worth just playing around with it a little bit for free. Um, I have used Rev, Rev before for captions. Rev charges $1.25 per minute for video or video to have captions on there. Now, Facebook does auto-generate captions as well on some of the videos, but I do find that often it's not accurate. Like they never get Aldwin right. When I say Aldwin, somehow they come out with a million different things. Blows me away. So, you know, <laughs> you know I've, I've got issues from Romper Room these ago. I can see Susan. I can see Sharon. And they never said I can see Aldwin. You know, I've still got still got issues. Anyway, I'm working through my issues on that one. <laughs> Anyone remember that show? <laughs> I'll say, what about me? No, I can see Aldwin. They just, I can see Bill. I can see Bob. I can see, you know, it's never Aldwin. Anyway, you know. It wasn't Carmen either. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's do some giveaways. If you've got any other questions, please pop them into the Mass Media Tribe group in the comments. We'll also get this video up on Media Queen TV as well on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to that if you haven't already. Uh, if you're on the live Zoom, make sure you save the chat if you can. If you can't save the chat, if you're on a phone, then I can get that to you. Okay, so just uh, yell out if you want that on there uh, and uh, let's share the screen now we'll go to these giveaways now, now we've got some amazing prizes now Carmen you mentioned also earlier we can work with you for free would you like to just share a bit about that first yeah I've got a brand new three-day challenge that even if you've never made any video before we'll get you to the stage where you can make your first video so that's kicking off in a bit over a week and everybody's invited to join that obviously and if you would like the link to sign up I will send it to you as soon as it goes live just send me a message via at cam oh, oh what i changed my instagram handle recently i forget to say it correctly every time i say it i'm gonna to need to practice that on camera with carmen at on camera with carmen please yeah find me via that on instagram or facebook send me a message and i will send you the link to join the free challenge Excellent. Fantastic. That is brilliant. Thank you so much, Carmen. That's fantastic. And for anyone who wants to chat, just send me a private message in Facebook. Okay. I'll just put the link there. There are three Aldwin accounts on Facebook. And the reason for that is because before Facebook brought in the follow feature, which they pretty much copied, uh, you know, Twitter with that, the follow feature, uh, we, we, you could have up to 5,000 friends on a Facebook profile. So I kept top, I kept maximizing the 5,000 friends. I set up new accounts. So now I say there's me, myself and I on Facebook. But there's one, <laughs> one, one main account that I use and that is the one with my hair to the side. So just private message me in there and uh, just say you want the chat from tonight and I'll get you the chat, okay? Fantastic, Carmen. And you also have a prize to give away. So I'm going to show the Wheel of Names. Let's do your prize first. Louisa also said that she has a copy of her book to give away. Single again and again and again for the single people, all the single ladies and the single men out there. <laughs> Louisa and I have some amazing conversations about our uh, relationships uh, and <laughs> failed relationships. I've, you know, I've had a lot of issues about my boyfriend sleeping with my best friend at 16. I have serious trust issues. <laughs> serious okay, trust okay. issues I just keep working on myself right I'm aware of my, my intimacy and trust issues and then never married or had kids at 47 I have a cat though I have committed to my cat I've had I adopted a cat 11 years ago and he's beautiful totally spoiled shocking uh so so uh so Carmen has a prize Louisa has a prize I'm going to give away some media consultations anyone else want to offer a prize here tonight as well I'm going to share the screen if you do just yell out it's a good chance to promote yourself here tonight 
and you do need to be on the live Zoom. Okay, can everyone see this? The uh, This is the wheel of names and I've put all your names in here. Can you all see that? You can, okay, brilliant. All right, so Carmen, your prize for tonight, let's draw your one first. You have an amazing prize there. So if you could just explain what your prize is. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna be delighted to train one of you for a full hour in a virtual coaching call. I sell these for $600 per hour and I would love to give one away free to one of you tonight to thank you for sitting through my presentation and we can go through your video strategy we can do some practical stuff and show you actually how to engage the lens and a few tricks and review your performances back as well so whatever you'd like fantastic what a generous prize Carmen thank you so much for that and six hundred dollars coaching prize with Carmen goes to Christina congratulations <laughs> Yay. Congrats, Christina. I look forward to chatting with you more. That'll be great. We might need to team up. <laughs> That's great. Actually, and you two will get along famously as well. I just know it. I can feel it. So so do connect on uh, social media, please, and, um, and make sure you get each other's details or just in the chat here, just put your details in there. Make sure you connect to get that prize. Beautiful. Okay, now for Louisa Pateman, single again and again and again. The winner is Louisa's won our own book. Okay, we will re just keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep <laughs> actually, actually, Louisa, Louisa, as we're spinning, as we're about to spin this, could you just explain a little bit about this book for those who don't know about it and where people can get a copy of it as well? Just unmute yourself there. The amazing Louisa Pateman. Yeah, I'm just just unmuting the the different screen. Um, yeah, look, um, it's my memoir and it's um, basically my journey through my 20s and 30s uh, and it unpacks, it, it talks a little about the happily ever after notion and the impact that that has on young girls and and uh, as we grow up and the pressures that that uh, places on us and I really unpack a lot of my failed relationships and how I felt in my 20s and 30s being single when everyone else was was coupled up and the struggles I went through. And, uh, and yeah, and look at the end, I, I redefine happily ever after. I end up going down a, a journey of, of becoming a single mother by choice uh, when I get into my late 30s. And so look, there's a lot of lessons in the end of it. And there's a lot, there's a lot more than just my journey. It's, it's um, yeah, there's a lot of conversations in there uh, that, that I wanted to start and uh, have people start to think about having the courage to be single and living an extraordinary life on their own. And uh, yeah, so there's, there's lots there to unpack and lots there to, to look at. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Oh, there you go. Louisa and I actually met in Hawaii many years ago. We were on a trip over there and, and we reconnected recently. Amazing lady. And she's a single mother by choice. She chose to get a sperm donor after a series of failed relationships. And now she has an amazing nine-year-old child who's just exceptional. So, uh, so this is her memoir. And uh, we've been getting some media around the place as well. So look out for this single again and again and again. And it's only $20 if you want to buy it as well. So um, now... Oh, very close. I uh, I actually have a copy of the book, so I will draw that again. I will draw that again. Okay, let's see who's going to win this. Oh, I'll take myself out of it. Here we go. I'll remove myself. I keep winning your book single again and again. <laughs> well, think, obviously meant to be, this Aldrin. Is, this, is, this is hilarious because I think it's the universe telling me yep. that I'm single again and again. And again. Yep, that's it. <laughs> It's like maybe I need the book more than anyone else. I have been reading the book. It's an awesome book, by the way. Mike Palmer, yay, congratulations. Married for... <laughs> Hooray! Well done, Mike. We were talking about that earlier that your wife's got to, you know, get into shape to stay in the, um, in the, in the relationship. So, you know, you might get some great tips out of this. <laughs> I've had some reviews from um, parents and grandparents saying that it's changed their perspective on their their children or their like their daughters or their granddaughters so it there's this there's something in it something in it for every age it's all good yay 
Awesome, awesome. Now, uh, fantastic. Congratulations, Mike. So please, uh, two of you connect. And both on the Gold Coast. So there you go. You could meet up in person possibly and uh, catch up with the book. And Mike is known as the business boomer. And he's got a wealth of experience when it comes to business too. So I'm sure you two will make a great, great connection there as well. All right. I've got two media strategy sessions to give away on uh, on Zoom that we can do or we can do in person if you're on the Gold Coast. So look at your media strategy, give you some tips moving forward and two of those to give away. And Rebecca, congratulations. You've won one. Please reach out on social media. Congratulations, Rebecca. We can't see you, but we know you're there. <laughs> we know you're there. And the next one goes to next media strategy session goes to Louis. Congratulations, Louis. You have won a media strategy session with me live on Zoom. Does anyone else want to give any prizes away before we stop sharing the screen here? Anyone else want to give prizes away? No? Okay, that's okay. Not a problem at all. Some of these events we have everyone's a winner, baby, because everyone just keeps giving away prizes. That's okay, not tonight. You'll just need to come back again to future events and talking of future events. We are having these once a month now. I will be holding the Mass Media Tribe events in the first week of each month. It will be either a Wednesday or a Thursday night. So the next one we have is on April 8. We have the amazing Linda Morrison. She's a specialist from Melbourne in online courses. She helps people create online courses, monetize online courses. And she's talking about catapult your business online is the topic. So that's going to be the 8th of April. Dates for your diary. 6 till 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. 8th of April is the next Mass Media Tribe event. And the next one after that, we have on Thursday night as well. It will be with Donna Marie Willett Flockhart, who comes from Beachmere and Moreton Bay area, just north of Brisbane. And we're talking about access super consciousness for media success. So she's an access consciousness specialist. And that will be a fascinating one as well. That's on May 6, 6 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And by then, Daylight Savings will be over. So... Uh, that's 6th of May. So keep an eye out. All our future events are listed in the Mass Media Tribe group on Facebook and also on Meetup. And also I recommend follow all the Norton and Eventbrite. If you're not already, then you'll get all our event updates. We do have the Global Good News Challenge. Today is the last day to join in three-day live challenge. You can do it straight after this. If you're game, here we go. We're just giving you all these tips on how to build your confidence on camera. Here's your chance to go out and do a Facebook Live and give it a go and speak to camera, share your name, what you do, three things you're grateful for and a piece of good news, either on your Facebook profile or in the Loving Life group on Facebook. All the details pinned to the top of the Global Good News Challenge Facebook page. Please hashtag Global Good News Challenge so that we can share your post. My goal is for a thousand Good News Crusaders by the 8th of the 8th this year to be doing Global Good News Challenges from around the world. That's my goal for a thousand. We've had people doing it in America and all over Australia, New Zealand, all over the place. So if you'd like to join in, it is a great way also for you to promote yourself to get into gratitude you will feel amazing and you will lift the energy of those around you and you'll be playing your part in helping to decrease depression anxiety and suicide rates out there so global good news challenge check that out we also have on friday the interview with christina who you've heard from tonight christina Savka. be seen heard and amplify your brand one o'clock this friday that's going to be amazing. And the mask exhibition, the art exhibition also, that will be opening 5.30pm. If you're on the Gold Coast, you're welcome to come along to that too at the One Arts Gallery. We're going to have some drinks and nibbles and, and celebrating Women's Week. And it's also a special friend of mine's birthday. So we're going to have a little birthday cake as well that night. So if you're in the area, love to see you. All right, that's pretty much all the announcements. Now, of course, the next Free Publicity Secrets event, it is actually March 24, not 23. So March 24, 9 to 1 p.m. All details at freeprsecrets.com if you want to come to that free event, 9 to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Connect with Carmen. She's amazing. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Carmen. Thank you for everyone watching. Thank you for those staying on. We've gone about half an hour over the scheduled time. So thank you for those who stayed on the live. Thank you to those watching on, on Facebook as well. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you tonight. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, any, anyone would like to share just one word, their top thing from tonight, what they got out of tonight? Top thing uh, for those on the live Zoom. Anyone would like to unmute themselves, share their top thing? What's their top thing before we wrap up? 
here's your chance. Just very informative. Thank you to all the presenters and everybody uh, who participated. Very nice. Thank you. Excellent, Rod. Thank you so much. Top thing. Any top things, Louisa, Rebecca, Louis? Would you like to share? If not, pop into the chat. Anyone on Facebook watching this? Pop into the chat. What are your top things? I'll just have a quick look at the chat and we'll wrap up for tonight. Thank you. We'll save the chat as well. If you're on the live Zoom, remember, save the chat. If you go to, to the chat area, just go where you can type a message to so the three little dots on the right there and save chat next to the file button. Okay, save the chat. And uh, Louise says, thank you, Aldwin Carmen, for the insights. Louisa says, embrace the interruptions in your live videos. Yes, Louisa. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. It's been an absolute pleasure, pleasure and privilege to be with you tonight. Thank you, Carmen. You're awesome. Please stay connected online. Join the other tribe members and help support each other. And here's to you shining bright and lighting up all those around you. And as Gandhi says, be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you so much for joining us. Mass Media Tribe wrapped up for March. We'll see you again in April and I'm sure online again soon. Bye for now.